Okay. We should be live, or we should be live now. I think we're live now. <laughs> Never quite sure. Uh, let me know if you can see and hear everything okay. And we have, we have a pretty fun stream. I'm not going to reveal the system just yet, but uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's cool. Okay, chat. Chat's there. Okay. So, uh, can everyone hear this? I'm getting some yeses. Cool. What CPU? It's the i9-9980XE. I'm going to change the meme to that. It's not the 7980XE. Actually, it is, except it has solder this time. So, um, yeah, that's what we're working on today, getting people saying that, uh, that you can hear. So, what we're doing is we have, I'm going to let some people join chat. But we have a 9980XE, and uh, someone, someone's asking car radiator or water cool Mora. I'll talk about that in a moment once I show it. So the 9980XE, if you don't know, is a 7980XE, except it's soldered, and uh, otherwise completely the same. So it's, it might be bent a bit better. I don't know. It's more mature silicon in theory, so it might clock a bit higher. But uh, the difference here is that it's a different CPU insofar as not being literally the exact same unit as our 7980XE, which is good because maybe the silicon quality is higher on our 9980XE. The problem I ran into previously was that um, the w when we did the review was that the 9980XE was just getting too hot for me to overclock it as high as our 7980XE. So if we fix that problem, then how high does it overclock at that point? That's the question we're looking at today. Uh, and I would like to try and beat our um, 7980XE Time Spy Extreme physics score. That's my goal today. And if it beats it without, I don't know if we'll beat it with, without chilled water. I don't think so. What did I even get? Uh, let's see, 3D Mark Hall of Fame. So last time I did this was for dual GPU. We got to get back in there and do that again. but. The CPU score previously, 12,428. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, a lot of that was in memory last time. A lot of, we're not going to be playing around with GPUs today, so that makes it a lot easier. I can just focus on the CPU. I would like to beat 12,428. That was our previous high score for the 7980XE at mixed clocks. It was like 5.0 or 5.1 on a couple cores, and then 4.8 or 4.9 on the rest, something like that. Maybe, f maybe 50 on the rest. That was with chilled water, though. And uh, if if the silicon quality is higher, maybe we can beat that with not chilled water. And then that would make things easier if I want to put it under dry ice later uh, and beat Jay's current score. So that's, that's kind of we're doing some quality testing today on the 9980XE. So it looks like chat's filling in a bit. Let's see if there's a couple super chats and things like that. You may need a bus radiator. Uh, it is a big radiator. OK, so we got. Eric S, $2, funds for flying build joint to the office. Thank you, Eric. We've talked about it, uh, not this year, as in not before end of year, but we have talked about the option. Uh, Podonox, $2 Australian. What CPU are you using with uh, clapping emojis or something? I don't know what that is in between each, each word. It's a 9980XE, which is a 7980XE. Uh, I've not deleted it. And when I was talking to Roman Derbauer, about the thermal issues we had on the 9980XE, we kind of discussed deleting, and I just told them, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Like, I just, it wasn't interesting enough, and I knew the risk would be, I, mean, I, I have, like, I said to him in Skype, I'm worried I'm going to rip the SMDs off, the substrate, because it's not like a 9900K where there's no SMDs there, no surface mount devices. Uh, it's just a flat substrate, and the only thing on there is a die. So worst case scenario is you might damage the die, but if you're confident that won't happen, you're fine. And the 9980XE is surrounded by a bunch of small components. So I told him I'm not deleting because our 9900K had some like solder overflow around the edge of the die that was just enough where if it had been a 9980XE, there'd be zero clearance between a cap. Uh, and, and he deleted his, and we all know how that went. So uh, he's going to repair it at some point, though. So I am not deleted here. It's just solder. And the bonus of Intel solder on the 9980XE is that once I bring it to something like dry ice, it will be easier to work with. I mean, it's, it should perform better than 
probably, than a 7980 XE with thermal phase, because once you're sub-zero, you really can't use liquid metal anymore. Liquid metal is, the hotter it gets, the better its thermal conductivity. So as you drag it below zero Celsius, uh, you need to switch to paste at some point. And solder should theoretically be better than most pastes. So we'll see. But I'm not doing sub animate today, or sub zero today anyway. Uh, John, keep up the great work. $5. Thank you. Are you going to test the Z390 Maximus 11 Extreme? No current plans. I think I've seen some interest for that one. So we, we might talk to Asus about it, but no current plans. OK, so. I just checked to normal chat and I saw Infinity XTX Hague. Please give me a shout out all the way from the UK. I'll give you a shout out, but I'm not going to go to the UK to do it. Uh, so Infinity XTX, welcome to, welcome to chat. Let's, um, we're at about 1,500 viewers now. It's starting to build. So let's, let's show off the system. Here's the thing. When I reviewed the 9980XE, we said, and our statement was that uh, as long as the, the concern was, can you get it to a high overclock without delitting, without needing an unreasonable cooling solution? So our stance was, yeah, you could probably get it to a really high overclock, like Kingpin's been doing with dry ice or liquid nitrogen, uh, as he's been doing with Allen 2. And it might be higher than a 7980DXE. But can you get it higher than a 7980DXE without liquid nitrogen? Can you get the 9980DXE to a pretty high overclock with a reasonable cooling solution that any user could fit in their case, for example. And so what we've done today is we are trying to answer that question. We have a reasonable cooling solution that anybody could fit in their case, uh, assuming you remove all other components from the case. And that is the Mora 3. So this is a 420 millimeter radiator. It's got four 200 millimeter fans on the front. It is basically a car radiator. And uh, I don't know if Watercool sources any other parts from from car radiator manufacturers, but I would be kind of surprised if they haven't done it in the past, if not currently. So uh, this is this is this is the Mora 3 with a whole lot of fans on it. Uh, well, large fans on it anyway. Uh, technically, <laughs> chat. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. It is reasonable. It is reasonable. What are you talking about? Um, so this is from Watercool. I've met them a few times, ran to them in Germany, and they've been trying to expand their US market presence. And I asked them, well, I, I don't know anything about your product, but please send some along, and we'll, we'll try and work with it and see if we can start understanding what you all sell. And this was one of the first things they sent. Um, so yeah, uh, it is a, it's got four 200 fans on it. The thing with those fans, though, is that it is um, technically we get higher pressure through the radiator with 140s or 120s, but these are different and interesting and they're quieter, so that's pretty cool. And then the uh, someone's asking about new case door and asking if you could get this into a it's a it's a computer radiator. He clickbaited us. I mean, if you think this is only ever used in computers, uh, then yes, I guess so. But I I guarantee you this is used in things like the the radiator core is used in things other than computers, for sure. There's no way there's enough volume on this to only be computers, or at least similar things out of the factory would be. But anyway, um, yeah, so we have four Nocto 140s on the back. They're not special. I didn't have, I didn't have another bracket for 200 millimeter fans in the front. So uh, Patrick installed four Nocto 140s in the back. One of them is the 3,000 RPM industrial fan, but I've brought down the speed to about 1,400 to match the others. So not actually that fast. Uh, which would be cool because if we can get these temperatures down without blasting 2,500 RPM fans, that means everyone will have a better stream experience. Um, what else should uh, I appreciate your lack of RGB in those fans? We appreciated it too, and that's why we gave Noctua an award at Computex for least amount of RGB stuff at a booth. The phrasing was a little different, but uh, so yeah, I don't know what else to walk through with this. I guess we'll do the basics. So I have the full system components list in the description below, if you're interested in any of them. And uh, we're using four of the 200 millimeter fans. We've tested these before versus other 200 fans. These are pretty good, but they're, I wouldn't describe them as overclocking fans. I mean, this is not, this is not an optimal setup. It's, it's, uh, this is what we would call a reasonable setup that anybody could have in their case. So it's not the highest overclocking performer, but 
for those, for the other Noctua fans, um, the, uh, the radiator is on a stand, so it's a Mora 420. It's on a stand, which is kind of cool. Very heavy, especially when filled with water, and also has quite the slicing potential, as I learned when I was assembling it. Uh, the pump is a dual DDC pump. This is from EK. We still have our wood block over here. So uh, dual DDC EK pump with a tall reservoir on it. And then that is hooked into, I've actually changed the CPU block, so it's no longer the EK Supremacy. We've changed it to the Heat Killer, what do they call it, is it 4? Heat Killer 4 from uh, Watercool. And unfortunately, we're not going to have an easy way to show you the, the system itself because there's a gigantic wall of radiator in front of it. So um, that's not going to have the effect I want. <laughs> I'll just be careful when I walk near this. Um, yeah, so really, really fun system to set up. And we're going to see if it overclocks OK. Uh, the, the biggest, biggest challenge is just thermals on this CPU. And this should solve a lot of those. I think we'll just leave this there. That's, I honest, I don't know if that's more or less secure, but I'll just not touch it <laughs> about that. Uh, so yeah, reservoir, pump, radiator, CPU, that's the loop. The GPU is just an FTW3, uh, RTX 2080 Ti FTW3. I say just because I don't have it under liquid. I don't have it under uh, ice, anything like that. So we're not going to get as high as the total score, but we should get a higher maybe CPU score than previously. I hope, like I said, the, I don't know, the really high goal would be 12,400 points. But I don't know if we're going to hit that without, <laughs> without ice. Um, OK, so is the stream, stream quality, stream playback quality OK? That's the question. I think, I think it is based on the comments. Just checking that before we really get going. And uh, I need to pause the playback here. OK, so a couple of super chats before I dive into this. We have Derek, uh, $2, hashtag shirtless stream, no. John, $5, keep up the great work. Are you going to test the, oh, I got yours, the Maximus uh, Extreme, not sure. Ryan Johnson, $5, went from 6 to midnight when the stream started. You get it, thank you, and you're welcome. Went from 6 to midnight when the stream started. Okay. <laughs> Kevin uh, Bagensky, $5. What shampoo do you use to get your lawn locks and is your hair naturally wavy? Uh, I use thermal paste. We've gone over this. Everyone should know this by now. Uh, so typically, you know, a bit of cryo knot and then you follow it up with some Arctic silver. And uh, yes, the other answer, Martin. Bartaz, which, uh, hi Joel, hi Steve, stay warm this winter via CPUs. I think we can accomplish that. I think, think this will warm up quite nicely with the CPU going. Call more, Derek, D Derek Jackson, $5, no message, thank you. Evil Bread, $2. Uh, you checked your power company before overclocking. I think they'll, uh, they have nothing to complain about. They're getting money for it. Sean Devine. Uh, $5, rip J's four radiators. Is this thing superior than J's at cooling? I don't know. I mean, it's not superior to dry ice. That's for damn sure, but we'll see. Uh, I've never used this radiator before. It should be a lot of fun, though. Okay. Um, so what do we... What size fan does that radiator take? We've got four 200s on the front of it. So if you want to find a box fan the size of those, I guess you could do it. Um, and then we have four 140s on the back. So we haven't even fully populated the back. But anyway, uh, yeah, I think we can start overclocking this. So a quick note, as always, one of the best ways to support our streams is through the GN Merch Store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick stuff up there. Uh, I say one of the best ways because, other than Super Chats, of course, we have, we have a lot of stuff, and we would like... We would like to keep that stuff moving. So if you want to get something in exchange for helping us, you can go to the store and pick something up. The mod mats will be in uh, first half of December. So if you're in the US, there's a, a very strong chance you'll get yours, barring any shipping issues, uh, before Christmas. And then international is kind of hit and miss. Email us if you're really concerned about it. But the mod mats are going to be in very soon. They're almost out of production. We actually got, we have a video to share. Um, uh, of how the mats are produced. I haven't even shown Andrew yet. So we have a cool video on that. Uh, but you can pick one up. 
Very popular item, keeps selling out, and we order them in waves. The next wave will be here soon. Otherwise, the GN Cobalt Blue beer glasses are in, and uh, you can pick those up on the store as well with discounts for multiple units. Okay, so let's just save the, these are all the old profiles from the previous streams. Let's save that as test. And then uh, let's blast this profile away and start over. So restore defaults, except for fans, we need those going. Fans, uh, numlock please. 100, 100, and let's do 80 on the VRM fan. That's the one that's on top of the VRM heatsink that EVJ includes on their uh, dark mother EVJ X299 dark motherboard. We've got a link to that below too if you're interested. Let's turn XMP on. And then uh, I think I might just leave it there and see what happens. So uh, let's turn XMP off for that, I guess. Just do complete stock except for the fans. So let's see what that does. Just to get us a baseline so that we can really appreciate uh, the, uh, th the progression of overclocking tonight. OK, so a uh, quick note, advertiser for the stream is Corsair. And they have the SF600, which is genuinely one of the smallest power supplies we've had here in the office. Might be, might be the smallest. Silverstone's a close competitor. But the Corsair SF600, let me point that over that way. Uh, one of the smallest, if not the smallest, modular, really small power supply. We have a link below if you're interested. Good for things like small form factor PCs, mini ITX build, where you have extremely limited space. And it is modular, so if you want to get rid of the cables for mini ITX build so that they don't unnecessarily clutter the very limited space you already have, then that's a good option for you. And uh, they also have these in 400 or 450 watt units. So they've got lower wattages too that are a bit cheaper if you don't need quite as much juice for like an APU build or something. Um, Corsairs work pretty hard on those small form factor power supplies this year. Okay, so 3D Mark, we're going to just do a time spy extreme run. Dry run, only, only fan speed blasted. I'm also using the, um, I'm using Corsair Link, not because they're an advertiser or even because I like it, because it's, it's not the best software, but because it is working alongside their Commander Pro Mini, I think it's called, uh, which we are using because there are so many fans on that thing and it's so far away from the bench that they just genuinely can't reach the motherboard. Uh, and they still have trouble reaching the, the controller because it's, it's really tall, the radiator that is. So th it's, uh, I think we've got five, we have five fans connected to that and then we have two fans connected to the motherboard it looks like. And the Noctua Black, uh, PW the 3000 RPM fan, is set to a lower PWM signal of, I don't know, something like 80%, something like that. OK, what's chat saying? Should have gotten an F-150 radiator. I think we'll, we'll cut it here. This one seems pretty good. And uh, we might play around with, like I said, I, I would love to dunk this radiator in ice like we did with the, uh, the previous, the 540 millimeter EK one, before going to dry ice, just because this seems like a lot of fun to put in the ice bucket. So uh, we might try that. We might do another stream with uh, dry ice or wet ice overclocking. Designed by Johnny Guru. <laughs> yes, John Guru works at, uh, works at Corsair these days. He doesn't run the site anymore. That is, uh, I think the guy's username is Oklahoma Wolf, runs the site now. OK. Will we see Christmas ray tracing this time? No. Uh, the Christmas ray trace, well, I don't know. I haven't used this card before, maybe. The, the red and green ray tracing, by which you mean artifacting, that we saw was in the stream with all the dying 2080 Ti's. And we just filmed the first, the core segment of that video. I have to finish once we get off the stream here. Uh, so that'll go up very soon. We finally finished working on all of the dead 2080 Ti's and dying 2080 Ti's and I have an update for you. You can check out the video later for that, probably tomorrow or something like that. Um, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not so you can catch that one because uh, that's where I walk through a lot of thermal data and firmware updates. I tested with Linux. A lot of you requested Linux testing last time, so we did that just to see if it artif artifacted in Linux. And I guess I won't spoil that result. Because uh, that would eliminate Windows as the potential point of concern, which would absolve NVIDIA. But uh, it's, I mean, yeah, that's unlikely. 8,809, 8 that's our baseline score here. So let me just kind of drag this over there. 
So 8,809 CPU score for a very baseline. So complete auto. Now our goal tonight is about 12,400. I don't think we're going to hit it, but I'm going to try really hard without ice. So auto is 8,809 without XMP. And that's it. OK. So that's our first run. What I want to see is what kind of temperatures do we have during a baseline run uh, so that we can compare this later to see how much we're heating up during the uh, throughout the night testing with higher frequencies and voltages. OK, cool. So voltages properly set down to low, like 1 right now, 1.1, something like that, or under, actually. Where's our temperatures? OK, let's just open up core. Core 5 is typically very hot on this specific CPU. Open that up. And we're just going to get a, a baseline for everything here. Uh, time spy is a really short test, fortunately. So that does benefit us because it doesn't need to get quite as uh, doesn't need quite as much assistance between runs to cool down. Okay, some super chats. We got APN Films, two dollars. Thank you. My 2080 Ti FTW3 has some pretty loud coil whine. Yes, uh, I mean that's every 2080 Ti has a lot of coil whine. Well, not everyone, but a lot of them, it's, when I say every, I don't mean every uh, single 2080 Ti. I mean every single like revision of the 2080 Ti. They all have some kind of coil line. Doesn't matter which one it is. Doesn't matter if it's FE. Um, so that is just a, a commonality with this, uh, this product. Yes, $2 R. I don't know. I wish YouTube would tell us the uh, exact currency. My CPU is still faster. Daggy, dad, dadjai. I don't know. Okay, well that's. I don't know who that's in response to, but cool. Michael Hudson, 4.99. EVGA Z390 FTW motherboard opinion. Would you pair that with an 8700K overclocked and EVGA XE Ultra Gaming 2080 Ti? You really like EVGA stuff. Um, I my opinion is I kind of want to wait and see what the Z390 Dark does because the Z390 Dark is uh, actually we'll catch this temperature before panning back. Z390 Dark should be the flagship. I don't know what it's going to cost. They, that might already be out there. So my opinion is I want to see what happens to that one. OK, so just for our baseline here, the score doesn't matter. It's windowed. Uh, we're at, let's see, maximum temperature. Uh, this is not, by the way, how you should ever measure temperatures by looking at max. You should, you should log it and average it. But anyway, um, we care about maxes for purposes of overclocking competitively. So our max is like 40-ish. And I think, I think that is a bit higher than I would like it to be. So we'll see how far that allows us to go. We're already at 40. Ambience is maybe like 20-something. OK, we got a couple more Super Chats. Uh, Sam, command to roll it. $2. Hey, uh, is that a 7980XE? Yes and no. <laughs> it is the Schrodinger CPU. Until you pull the cooler off, you don't know which one it is. It's both the 9980XE and 7980XE simultaneously. Demage, $5. Steve, if I purchased dash two dash mod mats, could I run them in SLI? And if so, how well do they scale up? They scale linearly. They will take, they'll take two times the amount of space if you have two of them. Uh, and we'll, you'll have to buy a, a GN ModMat SLI bridge with it. We don't have those yet. I'm sure, they'll be, I'm sure they'll be difficult to get and very expensive and just like NVIDIA's. Uh, OK, so whoa, what's going on? I was just hitting delete or something. Plus, that's what I was hitting plus. OK, so let's do XMP. We're already where we want for the fans. Per core, I'll, I'll mess with the memory last. Uh, let's just put 40, come on, man, numlock, please. 46. Let's do 45. Let's do 45. So 4.5 gigahertz is, actually, you know what? What was, I have numbers for 44, and I have numbers for 44 at 1.15. So we can do a pretty good comparison there. No other changes. Uh, not going to mess with VIN. Well, we should, we should do that. Let's put that 1.95 for VIN. Not going to mess with anything else here. So let's, let's do that, see what happens. OK. Do they support J tracing? 
Is that the new Chase Two Cents version of ray tracing? So, uh, like I said, picking stuff up from the store tonight is one of the best ways to support our streams. The mod mats will be in very shortly. If you want one before end of year, you should place an order soon because the next round will probably be in January, maybe end of January, something like that. Uh, and then we also have the beer glasses and the mugs. If you're a glassware person, we've got 15 ounce mugs for coffee drinkers out there with the same teardown logo as you see on this GN pint glass with the gold rim and all that stuff. So you can pick those up on the store. And we got an order in already from Nate in uh, Rock Rapids. Picked up a mod mat. Thank you, Nate, for picking that up. Much appreciated. Okay, so let's let's launch this again, and then we'll have to show off the we'll have to show off the system again for people who just joined a bit ago. Uh, maybe once this is running. Okay, so CPU only. I click out, back in. Otherwise, it'll break. And yep, there it goes. That's what Time Spy does. Okay, so our original baseline score. Our goal is about twelve thousand four hundred. Not sure it's achievable. Our baseline is 8,809, and we just pushed up to a, a very small overclock, 4.4 gigahertz, one point. Did I type in 1.15? <laughs> I don't remember what I typed in. Hang on a second. Just before we commit to that, I don't remember exactly what I typed in. 3D mark kill, okay. <laughs> this was, uh, talking through everything, but not actually thinking about what I was saying. Uh, 1.15. Okay, cool. And that's before any loading, but good enough. Should be pretty flat LLC on this. Okay. Let's just do a quick, let's do a thermal and frequency, a uh, thermal and voltage check first. So we're gonna run this windowed CPU test. And then I'm just gonna check on hardware info while that's going. Hardware Info 64, by the way, some of the best software you can get for your PC. It's free. Uh, I've never talked to the developers, but I would like to because their software is extremely good. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Someone said, the guy who was asking about the motherboard, not an EVGA fanboy. It looks like a good motherboard. Yeah, the Z390 FTW is fine. Um, if you're not running it stock, it's even better. It's When it's stock, it doesn't really follow the Intel spec that closely because uh, the turbo durations are extended. If you don't care about that, then I, I don't really have any major problems with it. Um, we might be looking at that board. I don't know. We might do a, a PCB analysis on that one. Okay, so voltage is 1.149. This, by the way, is an EVGA board. So LLC is pretty flat on the X299 Dark, which is what we want for this application. And we are at 4.4 gigahertz, so we're at where the frequency was set. And max temperatures are getting in the 50s now. So it's, it's starting to climb. We should do a, um, a current clamp test too. So I'll, I'll set that up while I show off the, uh, the test bench. Please say free software. Hardware info is free software. To use anyway. Not to make, but uh, okay. So we're okay for thermals. Definitely in the 50s. Let's let's look at this bench again. I'm gonna hook up a current clamp if I can get in there without knocking anything over. And <laughs> it's a very close call with the radiator or with the uh, VRM fan. So 40 millimeter fan would not survive contact with anything very well. This goes that way. Oh no. Okay. All right. So we're good there. I need somewhere to put this without it falling over. That's going to be a challenge. Give me one second. I gotta gotta maneuver without breaking the VRM fan. <laughs> Don't know if it's possible. Uh. I can just hold it while we do a run for the whole stream. Kind of. Oh, got it. Okay. If it falls, it's going to kill that VRM fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll walk you through the system one, one second. Uh, we just need to start another one of these first. So I can look at the power consumption while this is going. Did I zero it? 
I don't think I did. It'll be off by about 0.4 amps because I forgot to zero it. Okay. <sighs> Why don't you have the original car fan on it? You probably could fit a car radiator fan on there, almost certainly. Uh, so we got a store purchase from Tim in Tracy in California. Thank you, Tim, for buying the signed mod mat. I'll be driving over to sign those as soon as they come in, the ones that, that were picked up during the stream and otherwise. So if you go on the store, there are two SKUs for the mod mat. One is the signed one. Uh, I have to drive out to the distributor and, and go through all that as soon as they come in. But thank you for picking that up, Tim. It helped significantly during the stream. Let's check out the current draw here. I can't quite see it. 23 amps. So 23 amps plus or minus about 0 0.4 because I did not zero it before I, I connected it. So it's about 276 watts, give or take a couple watts. And has that changed at all in this part of the bench? Nope, 22.6. So there's your power consumption with a 4.4 gigahertz, 1.15 volt overclock, if you can call that one. And then here's the test bench, just to walk you through it. People just joining. It's a Mora 420mm radiator with four 200 fans, 200mm fans on it, on the front. And then on the back, we have... This is good placement because it's stopping me from walking too close. Uh, and then on the back, we have four 140mm fans, Noctua also. And one of them is um, the 3000 RPM fan. I just spun it down a bit. And I don't think there's a reasonable way for us to show the rest of the bench, but it has an RTX 2080 Ti FTW3. Uh, it's got a 9980XE for the CPU. We have a heat killer four block from Watercool on the, on the CPU. VRMs are just cooled by air and a heat sink, nothing special. And I think that about covers it. Corsair AX1600i for the power supply and Andrew's going handheld. So if the stream drops, we'll be back momentarily. <laughs> but let's make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, I think you're good. So that's the rest of the bench. And, you know, it would be a good shot is if you dropped it right on the middle. And then it could be, it could be replayed for each We could do what Kyle did and make a shirt out of it. <laughs> so yeah, X299 Dark. Uh, the heat color block's pretty nice. I haven't used one of those before. RTX card, I haven't tested it or anything extensively, but it's doing just fine for this. So that's what we're working with. <sighs> All right. So what we need is no hardware info running. What was our, our temperature range is in the 50s, low 50s for that run. Let's just run a full CPU pass. What CPU block? It is uh, Heat Killer 4, Watercool is the brand. What's up with the SFX PSU? Uh, that was the advertiser for the stream, went through it already, but if you're interested in it, there's a link in the description below. Okay. Got a store pickup from Joseph in Florida. Thank you, Joseph. Picked up a mod mat as well. Uh, very, like I said, that's, that's uh, we're really proud of that product, of the mod mat, because it's completely custom. Like it was our design. It's our spec. We had to go find uh, the, the way to get it made. And we've had to do all of the troubleshooting. We had to even figuring out how to ship it because uh, we have a video where we tested a $400 like pneumatic stapler versus tape because shipping a six pound total shipping container in a tube you know, is, is kind of a challenge. So it's very fun to work on the product. It, it really gave me some insight as to what manufacturers deal with when we're criticizing their products now. I understand better like shipping delays, manufacturing limitations, uh, working with factories, stuff like that. It was really good perspective for us. So um, what we are running right now is just 4.4 gigahertz and 1.15 volts. I need to take a note for that, of that for later. 4.4G, 1.15. And I'm running this because I knew we had a baseline number for it in our review uh, for performance and for thermal data and all that stuff. So if you wanted to compare, you can check the review for some of that. We're in about the 50s right now. It's only maybe a one minute benchmark, something like that. So it doesn't really have time to soak into a radiator the size of this one. Um, it's that there's a lot of mass there 
and it would take a while to reach steady state. So being a shorter benchmark is beneficial to us. And for this score, we ended up at 10,142. So our goal tonight is about 12,400. And with auto, with complete auto, no changes, we had 8809. So where that number is right there, we're at 8809. And then for 4.4G, uh, we are at 10142. So we're approaching the goal. But it gets, it gets increasingly more difficult as we continue to climb. And we are going to have to, uh, for sure, do some mesh overclocking today as well. That's going to be a big jump for us. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get that into BIOS. And then I'm going to read some of the Super Chats. OK, so quite a few of these to check out right now. Kevin Wise, $5. I take it Intel will not release a new chipset for the new 9 Series X processors. My understanding is no. I, I think they're going to stick on X299. I know some motherboard makers are working on a, uh, a new X299 board for these CPUs. I mean, they're the same CPUs for the most part, um, but there will be new boards. So if you want something that's maybe a bit more tuned, then perhaps they'd be worth looking at. But we don't have any yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, I've seen one seen one of the new X299 boards, and it was an improvement over the, the vendor's previous board, but we can't talk about it yet. I had AVX offset on. That needs to be turned off. That's bad. So we were actually not, not legitimately at 4.4, because I th think there is some AVX going on in TimeSpy. Let's try that with AVX offset off, because that is a bad thing that we don't want. OK. What video card is it? It is an uh, 2080 Ti FTW3, but we're not really using it right now, other than the output display. It's a bit of an insult to it. 12K, this may take a while at this rate. Not, not as long as you think to get at least to 11. OK, got a store order from Samuel uh, in Australia. And he picked up a. Uh, a mug and the oh the shirt I've got on this design the teal logo anniversary shirt thank you Samuel for picking that up it's got a long journey but we will get it shipped immediately uh, okay so we just need to see if that offset affected any the score at all in any meaningful way and it is uh, certainly possible okay run that. Okay, Super Chats. We had a message from Mitchell Rule. $5. Do you think you'll be able to push the 9980XE up to the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition temperatures? Uh, I, think, I think we can do it, but maybe not under this cooler. I don't know. We've got a lot of thermal headroom here tonight, speaking seriously to that one for a second. So we're good up until the 90s, really. Um, you start having some, some derating and some fall off of stability as you increase the temperature. Voltage can't go as high as we increase the temperature, which is what in turn increases temperature. So uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to push up until I'm out of thermal headroom, and then that'll be it. That'll be the end of the overclock. Because I guarantee the CPU can go higher than what we're going to get tonight. It's just we'll need more uh, and potentially dry ice or something like that. So just if you're curious, the current is still at, it's at about uh, one amp higher. It's like 24, 24.5. So that could be variance. but. Uh, potentially there's some impact from AVX there. Okay, we got a message from Evil Bread, who has one of the best names. $2, what merch do you need to sell the most right now? Uh, I mean, honestly, just look through it and see if there's anything that you genuinely like, because anything we have in stock, we're, we're obviously happy to fulfill the orders immediately. And then anything else that's on back order, we get those out as soon as they come in. Um, the, uh, the Raglan hoodies, I'll, I'll note, we just restocked those. So if you've been waiting, I know some people were emailing me asking when we'd get them back in. The two-tone lightweight hoodies uh, are back in stock. So if you're dealing with some kind of cooler fall weather or something like that, then uh, those are on the store. And they are a, uh, a great item for not too cold and not too hot. Kind of like the CPU's current stance, but that's not going to last very long. So previous with this exact setup, except AVX offset was on, I'm just kind of making sure that wasn't a factor here. 10,142, yeah, oh yeah, so 10,412. So uh, let's just update that note. This was with AVX3 offset, and we're at 10,412. 
outside of error a bit. So now we can, let's just keep pushing frequency incrementally until we get to a point where it kind of gets stuck and we have to increase the voltage. And then uh, mesh. Mesh will matter a lot tonight. So we'll start pushing mesh too. Also helps a bit in the graphics. So the graphics benchmarking is interesting because if you're a GPU bound, which we're not here, but in the other two parts of time spy extreme, we would be. The faster, uh, if you get like two threads to be a bit faster than the rest, if that's kind of your maximum headroom on the CPU, it is beneficial because the GPUs waiting on the CPU a lot of the time keep up uh, like in dual and NVLink benchmarks or something. So getting the, CP the, the two main threads a bit faster is always very helpful for some more graphic score, actually. Not even just CPU score, but it helps with graphic score. Extreme voltage mode, enabled, sure, whatever. Uh, so then 1.95, we're just going to leave. Uh, this isn't going to be stable, I'm pretty sure. 1.15 for target voltage. I'm almost certain that's not stable. Auto for the rest for now. And you know, 4.5 is not really enough. Let's just go to 4.6 maybe and see. I think we're going to need like 1.25 for this, but I'm going to try 1.24 and see if we can get away with it. But I'm almost positive we need 1.25. Yafs, $5. Can you please say it's extremely important Yafs CPU is still faster, daggy. Okay, now I understand more. You're responding to someone and you're, you're having a proxy war with them via me, which I'm okay with because you gave me five R's for it. I don't know what that, I don't know if that's Russian. I don't know what currency that is. They just put the letter R next to it. Thank you though and uh, congratulations on your CPU being faster than daggy's. Satellite of discontent. Uh, $5 Australian. In fire suppression systems, they have dry water. Be cool to use that and leave the fans on and see what the performance is like for cooling. Please test. No immediate plans, <sighs> but that is an interesting point. This doesn't, otherwise, what, I don't even, I don't know anything about what, uh, what you're talking about. I don't know anything about fire suppression systems. Is that used for like, uh, someone in chat can let me know. What is that used for, like electrical fires or something? That would make sense to me, I guess. Grease fires. Okay, let's launch that. See how that does. What's chat saying? <sighs> waiting, on, waiting on the stream to catch up to where we are. 5R PogChamp, 5 Roblox, 1.42 volts. No, it shouldn't be 1.42. It should be 1.24. Did I say 1.42 or did I type it? Let's see. Let's see what it is. It's 1.24. It's not 1.42. If I said 1.42, then I meant to say 1.24. Okay, just checking before we committed to that run because that would have been not good. All right, this time spy is gonna do the trick it does. Yep, run custom. Okay. What's mesh overclock? So if you're familiar with the uncore overclocking, uh, it's like that. It speeds off a bit of everything. Um, I think the what is the stock setting like 24x or something? I think it might be a 2.4 um, gigahertz stock for mesh, but we are at uh, we're at 24 right now. I think I pushed the 33 or 34x ratio on the 7980xe when it was under ice. I want to say 33 was pretty stable, maybe 34, and uh, you'll see everything boost a bit. So. Um, Mesh is one of the most overlooked things you can overclock, but it's on the X9, so like X299 CPUs. You don't need to look for it in um, like an 8086K or anything like that. Uncore overclocking. Doesn't it make more sense to monitor thermals on an external machine? Well, no, it doesn't matter because we're not, we're not in a scenario where it's really relevant. Uh, you could put a thermocouple in there and sandwich it between the die and the the the, C, the IHS and the cooler or something, but there's really just no point. I mean, we can we're just we're just checking every now and then. I don't <laughs> unless we're doing the when we're doing like the ice overclocking. 
then it becomes more important to do external monitoring, which we did. We had thermocouples going into the reservoirs and the tank and all that stuff. Uh, if you're doing LN2, you for sure want one in the LN2 pot to make sure you know what, what temperature that's at because uh, that's really important for booting. So you don't cold bug or stuff like that. Okay, so what is that pass? We are at 4.5. 10,816. I said I thought this would crash, but it, it did not, so that's good. 4.6, 1.24. And that is at 10,816. And our goal tonight is about 12,400. So take a note of that score. And let's go ahead and look at some of the, uh, let's get a quick thermal read so I understand where we're sitting for a headroom. So we're just going to set this up so I can take a look at headroom after just one pass, which is not going to be that hot, but important to know. Okay, and we got some super chats in, some store orders, stuff like that. So we got, uh, let's see, a store order from Nicholas in North Carolina. I picked up a, an autographed mod mat. Thank you, Nicholas. Yours will get to, get to you a bit faster than the others, given the, prox the distance. We have Jason in Texas picked up uh, a Teal Logo shirt as well. That's this one, the Teal Logo anniversary shirt. And then one more to read off. Caleb in Arizona picked up a mod mat as well. Thank you, Caleb. And... Uh, everyone else who's picked stuff up during the stream so far, always helpful. I'm trying to keep an eye on both the, the like normal chat and super chat. So if I'm behind on super chat, just give me a bit of time. I always get to all of them. Sometimes we run a little behind because I try to interact with, with uh, everyone, with normal chat too. I don't want to paywall it if I can avoid it. But it does mean we run a bit, bit behind sometimes. Okay, what questions do we have? Guido Salducci, $5. Is that radiator for the 99... Oh, where'd it go? Is that radiator for the 9980XE or for the new, in quotes, RX590? Uh, it's, for, it's, it's for whatever you want it to be for. I haven't test the, tested the 590's thermals in a serious way yet, so uh, we need to get around to doing that. But I pushed that one off for review because we got it like 24 hours before we would have had to film a review, and I'd rather push higher quality content that has had time in the lab so we can test it properly than just rush it out, especially because we already were dealing with the 9980XE launch this week. But we'll review it soon and look at the thermals. So where was our temperatures were in like the, our worst was 58, 61, 60s. So it's fair to say we're about 60 now. I'll leave that up for a second. And um, we've got plenty of headroom here though. Okay, so let's get into BIOS. And if you haven't seen the machine, we're on a gigantic radiator with uh, four 200 millimeter fans on the front. Out of interest, I see the silicon wafer in the background. What CPU dies are they? We're actually not sure. Um, and neither was the person who sold it to me. I bought it on eBay. And postal carrier, unfortunately, well, I don't know. It's not really their fault. The person who shipped it put it in an envelope. The postal carrier bent the envelope. Like there was a crease down the middle of it. And so it's all shattered up in the top. But we decided to frame it anyway. Not sure what, um, what it came from. Honestly, don't know. It looks cool, though. So that was at 46. Let's just see. Can we get 47 with this voltage? That's, that would be nice. 47x on 1.24. Let's just go ahead and put mesh up a bit. Oh, well, no, I want to I wanna change mesh standalone so we can see what kind of impact there is. Do that separately. ZDG says Andrew is D dash man. Your, I think it means you're the man. What PSU are you using to power this rig? It is a Corsair AX1600i. Uh, it's, it's an expensive power supply. Um, so it has an option to go multi-rail or single rail. We disabled, we went to single rail because otherwise you just constantly trip all over the um, overcurrent protection. So we disabled that because we will be going over, uh, we'll be going over 40 amps at some point. 
Most likely. So this is just 47, might crash here. But I want to get a current clamp read during this run. So I'll take a look at that if it's still on. Uh, no. Let's carefully extract this. Actually, I'll just turn it on where it is, which means it's going to be about 0.4 amps off uh, for accuracy. It'll be a little inaccurate, but close enough. And we, if we needed real numbers, I could zero it out. Okay, so it's back on. I'll get that number in a second. What CPU is that? It's the 9980XE. We got a, uh, what, I don't know what currency this is. Sorry. We got a 1000 RUB super chat from Lala Fafa. Thank you for the, uh, for the super chat. Here's a handful of money. Buy some gas for your car radiator based setup. It needs energy for stable overclocking. PS, yay from Russia. There you go. Keep up the, good, the great content. Well, thank you. Lala Fafa for the 1,000 uh, Russian, Russian rubles. Thank you, donation. And we <laughs> buy some gas for the car radiator setup is probably about what we'll need because we are approaching 30 amps now. So it's not that much. I mean, we do like 40, uh, I think I was doing about 40, 43 in some of the blender benchmarks with a heavy AVX loads. But 30 is nothing to, you know, it's, it's no small amount of power. I think we're at 28, specifically 27, 28, something in there. So roughly 330 watts in that range, plus or minus 0.4 amps. Rupees or rubles, thank you. OK, a couple super chats. Juiced Rove. My screen went black. Give me a second. It'll come back. The screen always does this. Or it's the cable, I don't know. So this is at 4.7, 1.24. I thought it would crash, but it has not. Juiced Rove, sub Steve, 50 Norwegian. Thank you, Juiced. Uh, as you can see, this is what is up right now, anyway. I think we were previously at 10,000. Were we 10,000 still? 816. And now we are at 10,990. That's a reasonable improvement. Uh, so there's some variance in this benchmark, and it is I mean, sometimes a lot of variants. Let's do another run. Same settings. I want to get two or three of these in and then just change mesh only. I don't know if that'll really impact much until we push higher, start changing memory and stuff. But let's do that anyway. Day talk, 499. Thanks for all the long hours you folks put in to benefit us all. What is your favorite CPU temperature tracking software? Uh, so I really like Hardware Info 64. That's on there right now. We were using that earlier. Um, it reads pretty much everything. It reads uh, even the special sensors on some of the ASUS boards. So really good software. You don't have to pay for it. Um, and uh, I don't know if they even have a paid version. I'm sure they have some kind of enterprise services. But we like that one. I bought and still use 8064. I bought that years ago. It was the first one I ever used. It does a lot of cool things. But for thermals, it's not, it's not my favorite anymore. It used to be. I, just, I find hardware Info 64 to be more accurate now. Um, because every now and then over the past years, Ada, there'd be a new CPU and Ada just wouldn't see it or it would read the temperature as obviously wrong. Like every now and then you'd see a CPU at negative 30 degrees when it's on air. So uh, we moved away from that. But I think they've gotten better. I just haven't revisited it. Uh, Exius to GBP. What do you think of the low RTX FPS in Battlefield 5? No current thoughts. We're looking at it right now. Um, haven't done enough with it to have any opinion at this time. Although I'm not surprised, I guess. Trevor Zuliani, $5. Please start a downhill mountain bike channel on the side. Can we rely on GN to have early reviews of the Z390 Dark Motherboard for those of us waiting on our 9th gen? Uh, I hope we have the Z390 Dark early. Jacob, if you're watching, get on that, I guess. Because um, I want to look at that board. We, we technically... I do have a side channel, the GN Steve side channel, and we, I do have, I keep saying we, but that one is just, it's just me. Just, Andrew doesn't follow me with a camera down the mountain. Um, that one is, uh, it's GN Steve. I have a couple videos up there for mountain biking, some downhill runs. I have a night ride I need to put up from Bryce Bike Park. Uh, okay, CB score 11,006. So as you can see, some variance demonstrated here. We're at, 10,990 before, nothing has changed. We're at 11,006. Second run is often a little, little bit faster, but we can just average those later. If, if I don't know, we should maybe do one more for averaging purposes. And then 
just change uh, mesh a little bit after that. Uh, Martin, $2. Steve, GN coasters or shot glasses? Question mark. We've talked about doing coasters. I have some, some ideas that I think would be pretty cool for those, but have not explored manufacturing options yet. Stuff I want to do, I don't know, we'll see. I, I have a few ideas, but um, it is definitely something we've discussed. We just need to put together a design and figure out like if we want to do anything special with materials, uh, because that would require probably a different factory contact than might be typical. Shot glasses, no current plans. But we, I mean, we have these. The pint glasses are up on the store on store.cameronsnexus.net. If you want to pick them up, it is the blue cobalt glass with the teardown logo. That's the same one that I've got on the shirt today. And that has the, uh, the gold rim as well. So we're running our third test pass for 4.7 gigahertz, 1.24 volts, and it hasn't died. And 1.24 is surprisingly stable, actually, because uh, this was not stable. Well, Blender's an AVX load. It was not stable in Blender for more than about six minutes. Although this is only running for one minute, so whatever. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how long it holds. Keeps our temperatures down a bit. Wishbone, $2. Beetle Adventure Racing with Car Radiator makes s sense. I need to look up Beetle Adventure Racing because it keeps popping up every stream. McFly, the old Volkswagen Beetle was air-cooled, so this must be more powerful. I don't know anything about the old Volkswagen Beetle, but I will say that uh, there are th there there are plenty of cars that would do well with this radiator setup if you had adapted it. I think just not very good ones. Uh, okay, so what's our third score looking like for averaging purposes? That's what we we need to do. Linus talked about wanting to do more car reviews. He should. Uh, he should do the opposite. Instead of we used a car radiator for a PC, we, should, we used a PC radiator for his Lambo. 10,994. Okay, so let's just change mesh. I don't know what's stable on this. Let's try to start with 32 and go from there. Especially if I can do it without changing any of the mesh voltage. Okay, we got some store orders, thank you. As I said one of the best ways to support us during the stream is through the GN merch store. So Jordan from, I believe that's Alberta, yes, Alberta, uh, picked up the 15-ounce ceramic mug. Thank you, Jordan. Been to Alberta a few times. Uh, Calgary and Banff. So we're leaving 47 alone. Let's just, oop, that mock's not on. Let's just do 32 on mesh. Might crash without changing anything else. We'll see. Let's see if that has any meaningful impact. Linus has a Lambo. No. Uh, Linus has a car he calls a Lambo, which is, I think, now dead. I'm not sure. I don't know if they, they got rid of it or not. I think he still has it. So when I went to LTX, Linus's, uh like fan meet and greet thing, they had his car there, which I think is maybe a Honda Accord or something like that. Feel free to correct me in chat. It's like a Civic or an Accord. And it was previously painted pink, I believe, by uh, Nikki V, and who worked for him. And um, at LTX, his fans did things like pour paint all over the radiators and pour, pour paint all over the seats, stick... Um, Glitter all over everything. I mean, it was it was bad enough that driving home, he probably could have been pulled over for littering, because there was definitely stuff coming off that car. <laughs> so no, he does not have a Lambo. He has a, he has a car they call a Lambo because it was painted pink and it had racing stripes, which which obviously makes it a Lamborghini. Okay, so physics run, time spike extreme, Civic. Thank you. It is still pink. I'm being told by chat. 2003 Civic is what uh, Linus strives for his Lamborghini. <laughs> okay, doesn't he have a new car now too? Pro I don't know, probably, I would hope so, given how beat up that thing was. Uh, oh, that's right, Rod Rosenberg's in chat. Hey Rod, uh, so Rod works, uh, works with Bob Stewart, BS Mods. He is, he is a large part of the BS Mods team. They do some of the best case mods I've ever seen. 
And Rod does a lot of the, uh, I guess, Rod, is it correct to say machine work? I think, he, I think that's correct to say. There's a lot of the machine work for those case mods. And he said in chat, I made a, a spoiler for the Lambo. That's true. He did make a spoiler for Linus's car. <laughs> I don't know if he has it on the car, though. <laughs> Chevy Volt now. Oh, it froze. Okay. So it froze. We need some. It, it did just fine with vCore where it is. I mean, it passed three times, so we can assume it's fine. So we probably need some vMesh on there. Probably just some vMesh to help out a bit. Okay. Um, just reading chat. Hybrid car, not electric. Surprisingly ugly. T surprisingly not ugly too. Okay, I was gonna say that's a mean thing to say about Linus's new car. Then again, he deals with comments all day. Uh, v core's fine. V mesh. Let's just bump that. Let's just tell it. That's an unlock. Let's just tell it 1.1. And let's do an uncore offset of 500 millivolts. And we'll do IO at 1.1. We're gonna leave SA alone for now. Let's see how that goes. See if it's stable this time. Those are some really good, really good things you can change uh, for X299 specifically. So X299, it's really hard to talk while reading chat. X299, um, you have a lot of options for tweaking Uncore. And IO is actually one of the most important things just for the platform as a whole for any big overclocks. You have to be careful with it. If you start pushing too high, it can definitely degrade the chip kind of like SOC voltage can on AMD CPUs. So you push it too hard, you'll have degradation. You might even not know about it until a couple months down the line when you can't hold the same clock at, uh, at a given voltage anymore. So be really careful if you start tweaking things like IO and SA voltages on different platforms. Uh, SA is a little bit more brutal on um, uh, system agent is SA on things like the uh, desktop DT platforms, S series CPUs. And then SOC is, is obviously important but you have to be careful with it on AMD CPUs. And Ryzen and Ryzen 2000 have different tolerances for that too, so be careful what you're looking up. Okay, current clamp still going. So, uh, I was trying to see if Rod posted anything in chat. I don't see it, if he did. Someone's, someone says, read the title. It says the name of the processor. Think they're playing into the meme of, Steve, what CPU is that? Because they like to make me say it. But joke's on you. I normally only answer that if you pay me via Super Chat. <laughs> OK. So no load right now. It's like 11 amps because it's not doing anything. Although that is very high for a loading screen. But that's because it's at a high voltage. There we go. Might crash. I don't know. Now there we go. Now we're at 30. 29.6, 30.7, plus or minus 0.4, because I have, still haven't zeroed it. Damn, that radiator is huge. Yes, I should probably show off the system again in a second. So some super chats. David Allen Hunt, $5, thank you. Best 240 millimeter CLC. If you don't like or care about things like RGB LEDs, uh, well, first I'll, I'll note that I if you can do it, if you can fit it in your case, I do prefer 280s because the cost difference is often really small and uh, the performance is, is noteworthy, especially the acoustic performance. So if you can fit a 280, I would recommend you stretch the budget there. But the good news about 240 and 280 CLC is most companies make both and it's the same thing except the bigger fan and radiator. So recommendation applies both places. But for 240s, if you don't care at all about RGB or LEDs or anything like that, um, the EVGA CLC240 is cheap. I mean, it's like really cheap. And they're all Azatec pumps, except for that new Corsair one, which I have on the way. That's cool. It, uh, But they're all pretty much Azatec pumps. So it survived, 11,003. No real score movement just from that. I think we have to do more with the CPU first. It's 4.7, 1.24, 1.1 for um, IO and mesh, 32X for the mesh ratio. 11,003. Uh, other than EVJ's CLC240, if you do like LEDs, uh, Corsair's, what do they call it? H100i Pro. And I haven't tested the new ones, so keep that in mind. But the, H5, the H100i Pro I've tested. Uh, that's an Azatec Gen 6 pump. It's not hugely different. Honestly, the impeller is a bit better. It's a metal, metal impeller instead of the plastic one. Uh, the tolerances for um, 
uh, permeation. Permeation is less of a concern on that one over a longer period of time. So you see more six-year warranties on some of those. And then other than that, it's a bit expensive, so not really my first choice unless you really like RGB or the look of it. Uh, fractals, I am not a huge fan of, but if, I don't know, they, they stuff all the cables into the tube sleeving, so if you're kind of a cable management nut, that might be worth looking at as well. Uh, okay, so yeah, no real score movement here. Let's restart it and push the, the core. Exeus, two dollars. Hey, tie your hair back near the fans. Yes, they are. They are quite dangerous. We'll walk over there again soon and take a look at everything. I gotta scroll up. Pop Shepherd, five dollars. Thank you. Hi, Steve. Long time listener, first time caller. I love the show. We got so much snow in New York. What's it like there? There in your neck of the woods. We're good right now. Although I would very much appreciate some snow so I could put this radiator in it and not need any fans. Uh, although we'd probably melt through it pretty quickly. I think we're, we're up in the 60s now for Celsius, although we are still rising, and we will continue to do so. Very rainy here otherwise, though. So we're going to go 48, 1.24 V-Core still. I'm not going to touch that. I'm, I'm tiptoeing up because I think we're going to blow through this voltage at some point and start crashing. Um, let me walk through the rest of the, the bench while we get this one up and running, and then I'll go through more... I keep almost tripping on that. Super chats and uh, store orders and stuff and normal chat. So if you missed it, this is the radiator. Effectively a car radiator. And it's uh, got four 200 millimeter fans on the front. We didn't have a mounting plate, unfortunately. This takes a special adapter. Didn't have the plate for the back. Otherwise, we would have eight of them on there, or at least six. And then we have four 140 fans on the back that are actually pretty low RPM. They're about 1,400. These are about 800, I think. Uh, so not too, no it's actually one of the quietest overclocking setups we've done while still being very effective. And that's because it's gigantic. And then we also have a dual DDC pump from EK. Uh, we have some tall EK reservoir that I'm always nervous about because it's kind of precariously mounted. The tubing is all, um, it's, it's pretty insulated tubing. So it's great for sub ambient or even slightly sub-zero uh, overclocking like with salt ice or something because it'll take longer to start forming condensation and uh, you can just wrap it with chop towel if you need to. But it does take longer to form condensation typically. The rest of the bench we showed previously, so X299 Dark Motherboard, uh, RTX 2080 Ti FTW3, G-Skill Trident Z Black Memory at currently XMP which is 3600 and we can push 4000 on this pretty easily typically. Uh, and that's about it. AX1600i for the power supply, if you missed all that earlier. Okay, so 3D mark. And you see if it crashes this time, because it's 4.8 gigahertz now. We're, just for perspective, on air, by which I mean not, uh, not exotic cooling, on air, our 7980XE was, um, was capping out at about 4.8, 4.9 before I put it in an ice bucket. And uh, we're already getting close to that target with the 9980XE. That said, I never put the 7980XE under this radiator. So not, not a linear comparison, but uh, my theory is that the 9980XE will have more overclocking headroom once we solve the thermal issue. And there is a big one because the deleted 7980XE was significantly cooler in some of our testing. We have that in the review. It's really interesting. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out because um, the, uh, the test results we show, it's core to core deltas were a big problem for standard application workloads like Blender. This is not Blender. This is like a really short test, so it's not comparable to what we're talking about in the review where it has more time to reach steady state like a real user would do. Uh, so core to core delta, big problem, but Fortunately, for a one-minute test, not an issue today for us. And the solder is also potentially beneficial once we move to something like DICE, whereas it's uh, actually not helpful for what we're doing today. It's, it's worse than liquid metal. And removing the silicone adhesive, that's a big part of it. Okay, a couple of store orders. Thank you for sending those, uh, picking those things up. So we got Garrett from Michigan picked up a, an anniversary edition Teal logo shirt, this one right here. Thank you for picking that up, Garrett. We also have the, the Raglan hoodies we just restocked today. Those have this design on the back, except it's in white, the, uh, the anniversary edition. The teardown logo is on the back of that one. 
And then we've got the GN logo uh, on the heart location for that Raglan hoodie. Thank you, Garrett. We have Clay from uh, Los Angeles, it looks like. Oh, no, sorry. I saw LA, and I just assumed Los Angeles. Uh, what is that, Louisiana? And uh, an autographed mod mat. Thank you for picking that up. Like I said, those are coming in soon. First half of December, we'll get them out in time for Christmas for people in the US, uh, almost certainly, unless there's some shipping issue. International, you can email support at gamersnexus.net if you're concerned or you have any questions. He can help you out. 11,204, so that's at 4.8. And it was stable. I do not believe this is stable on anything else. But it's stable for time by extreme. So 11,204. Pretty damn good. Our goal tonight is 12,412, I believe, was the, the score to beat. And if we can beat that, that would be impressive because that score was on uh, on ice water with the 79 EDXE. That was our previous high. Okay, let's just let this run again. And this also means we can keep our current draw, our current a lot lower because the voltage hasn't needed to be pushed nearly as high as I thought it would tonight, which is really great news for our overclocking potential. Star, 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 and chat says, I actually love this. Glad to hear. Uh, we got LA equals lower Alabama, apparently. <laughs> uh, okay. I am Bob is probably the simplest message we've seen tonight. Hello, Bob. Any, any reason you didn't use a car radiator fan? Um, well, we had these, and they work pretty well, and we had a mounting kit for them and all that stuff, so it made sense to use these. Okay, store order from Philip in Arizona. Thank you, Philip. Uh, picked up a, oh, I thought it was the, oh, you did pick up the cobalt blue teardown pint glasses, so thank you. Picked up one of those, a blueprint shirt. It's our, I think it's our only non-black shirt other than the raglan hoodies, the blueprint shirt. And then also the uh, teardown crystal in medium size. So that is, uh, actually we gave one of those to our, our, our friend Sasha in Taiwan earlier this year for being the best tour guide because the products at the show were lackluster and so we had to give one to someone and it was Sasha for being a good, good tour guide. <laughs> in the Guanha Digital Plaza. <laughs> I'm trying to trying to keep up with all the chats. Call your local HVAC specialist. I think we're good. Okay, so is that score significantly different? No, not really. Okay, that's within variance. So 11,180. We were at like 11,204 for the first run. The only reason I re-ran this was to get a quick eye on the thermal. So for one pass, no serious um, like endurance testing here. Our max is about 66. And like I said, this is a terrible way. Don't ever look at your, your thermals this way if you're trying to gauge actual performance by looking at just like the max column. Uh, really bad way to do things. We don't we don't do our thermal testing that way. The reason I'm looking at it though, is because for s purpose of overclocking like this, we are going to be limited in frequency by our hottest core. And so if any cores are ever throttling, then uh, that's a problem, and I should dial it back. So just gonna reboot and see what we can we can get. Any chance of oh, I've got a couple questions here, for super chats. Give me a second, I'll get through those. Um, I th think we want to do 4.9 and see if this crashes on, on 1.24 volts. It probably will. 4.9, okay. I keep saying that though. I said that at 4.7 as well. Not a gaming CPU. What CPU is it? It's a 9980XE, which is a 7980XE. Have you ever, hey Steve, have you ever tried liquid nitrogen overclocking from a uh, tuna user in chat? Yes, um, not in our own studio, but I, I did a video with Roman, with Dear Bauer, I think two or three years ago at Computex, where we got some hands-on with LN2 overclocking. It was fun. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's like a 30-minute setup, so can't really get too hands-on. He did a lot of the work for all the media who came by. 
But, um, and of course, they already knew about how the CPU would perform, so that wasn't a concern. But I did get to learn LN2 pouring. I learned kind of management of the liquid nitrogen. Oh, yeah, this is instant, instant crash. Like, it's, Windows is non responsive, so that's no good. Uh, I learned a bit about managing the setup, though, which is important and something that would have been harder to learn on my own. So now I just need to actually do some of that here. Okay. Some super chats to read. So we have uh, Duff Biker, $5. Steve, can you build and try a bond cooler on a modern system, old school style? Uh, and you linked something, which I can't click. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with probably no on that question. Um, 1.25. Okay. So we've got we're pushing for 4.9 gigahertz here, and just being at 4.8. That 1.24 is already better than the 7980XE was. The problem is, again, uh, well, 7980XE got there, but not without a lot of help from subambient cooling. So if this can get there without subambient cooling, that would be great. It's just a question of can we get to where the 7980XE was with subambient cooling? And I think that answer is probably no. But our goal is 12,400 points or so. And we're at 11, uh, I think 11,200 or something right now. Let's see if that's stable. Let's check the current draw too. Kevin, Kevin Bagensky, $5. Hey Steve, if you want to cool that radiator, maybe try a fish tank with a roll of R22 insulation. Should be fairly cheap and better than an open top cooler. That's an interesting point. Uh, I actually bought some insulation from Kingpin. I'll pull it out one second. So I bought, <coughs> Bought some of this from Cane Pen and he shipped it out of, from Taiwan because that's where he lives. So I don't think this is what this is what you mean for the fish tank idea, but bought some of this for the board. So just insulating the board from condensation drip off of tubes and things like that uh, or off the LN2 pot in the case of going dry ice. That is what we would use. So I bought some of that from him, along with some other things, like more of the Kingpin thermal paste. And he wrote on that piece of paper over there, because he, he saw my name on the order, knew who it was. <laughs> I didn't tell him I was ordering it. And just wrote, to my best fan, KP. And I think that's a reference to like Street Fighter or Tekken. Uh, someone in chat can help me out. There's a character in one of those fighting games that when he got a KO, he would have a note that said, to my best fan, it was signed by that character. Someone help me out in chat, tell me who that was or what game that was. Do you turn off two cores since you're doing 3D Mark? Actually, turning off cores uh, does not help with Time Spy Extreme. We've tried it. Looks like the stream is catching up to where we are right now, so I'm just waiting to see what chat says. <laughs> oh, nice. The Corsair RGB starter set was in the shot with it. <laughs> the crayons. Okay, just waiting for chat to catch up to see if anyone can help me out with the, the name. That's not launching, let's try again. Johnny Cage, thank you. Johnny Cage. <laughs> I don't know if he, so I don't know if he's a Johnny Cage fan. Uh, like if, if that was his, his main when he played, it, or if he even played fighting games, or if that's just, he was just being a dick. I'm not sure, not sure which one it was. <laughs> yeah, so not stable, we need more voltage. We're at 1.25. Mortal Kombat, Johnny Cage. It's Danilo, your cameraman is great, on point. He says, he says, okay. Uh, Kevin from New York ordered a lightweight Raglan zipper hoodie. Thank you, Kevin, for picking one of those up. 
We just got them in. They were all at zero except for like small and 2x, I think. They're all gone. I missed the bio screen on that, sorry. Okay. So this is a 9980 XE. If you missed that, I'll walk you through the rest of it later. Chad is still talking about um, Mortal Kombat. Someone else is saying Ken Powers Street Fighter. <laughs> Input and output radiator temperatures would be epic. Yeah, we had those um, for the uh, for the ice setup. We had that, but I have not set it up here. That would have been cool. It wouldn't be too hard. Just didn't think to do it. God, I wish Numlock were on by default. One point. Let's try 1.26, see if that's stable, 4.9. Any plans for GN shoes? Nope. <laughs> Answer that one quickly. Use a fish tank chiller. We will do some kind of sub ambient at some point. Okay, Let's see if that holds. Uh, Super chat, still catching up perpetually. Uh, H. Mark Bauer, $10 Canadian. Thank you. Any chance of more 6X anniversary teal logo shirts? Uh, crazy sizing means that it's just slightly smaller than a 3X where I am. Um, the teal logo shirts are, so those are made in the U.S. They're pretty standard U.S. sizing. Um, the, I think, I don't know if we have any 6X in stock. We had some. I try to order like one or two with every run. So keep an ear out for when I say, because we try to accommodate all the sizes we can. Um, and uh, I think we still have like some extra smalls and some other sizes just because, just in case. But I do try to order a couple just to accommodate everyone each run. So keep an ear out for next time I say we, we restock the t-shirts because I'll probably try and get another one or two in with that run. Okay, Wind Racer, sixteen, five dollars. Any teal logo shirts in three X coming in? It's a great looking shirt. Oh, we got a lot of size questions today. Are we out? Are we out of a lot of those teal shirts? I didn't know we were that low. Sorry, sorry guys. Um, let me see. Teal, tri blend. I think tri blend only goes up to four X. I don't think we can get bigger than that. We have four X and tri blend. We don't have any three X. And then we have. Uh, we have one 5X in the cotton, 06, and then we have 03. So exactly the sizes everyone wants are gone. Not stable, but it got, it got further this time. Last time it crashed, more or less instantly crashed on the desktop. It black screened. And uh, this time we at least got the application booted. So we need more voltage. Uh, 4.9 gigahertz right now, 32X mesh. That needs to go up. We are at uh, 1.1 VMesh, 500, me 500 millivolts uncore offset, and uh, 1.1 IO voltage, just to give you a run through of all the settings. So 49, let's push this, let's just do 1.2, nope, 1.28. Just trying to find stability without torturing the thermals too much on this thing. I know it can do 4.9, I just don't know where the voltage needs to be. What's the chat saying? Still, still catching up on chat. Nice tip on the shutdown switch. Wasn't aware of that. Shutdown switch is great if you're working in a bench setup. Not so helpful if you are, obviously, if you have it in a computer. But uh, So there's some really good, just on that point, probably my favorite button on any motherboard, I think, is about the same as Buildzoids, which is the safe boot button. And it's typically red. Um, Asus for sure has it. MSI has it on some, and EVGA, I think, has it, where uh, you push it and it retains all your settings, but it doesn't apply them, which is extremely useful if you know you just need to change the voltage or you just need to change the frequency and not blow away all the settings work you did. Yes, there's one on here, red button. It's also a retry switch on some boards that's really useful for uh, memory training. You just keep slamming retry over and over until it finally boots, because some of the tertiary timings 
and, uh, and non-exposed timings will keep training as you continue to try and boot. And so if you keep hitting retry, there's a chance that eventually it will train and the timings will hold. They'll be stable. Uh, not a great idea for constant use because if anything ever happens to the settings, you're, you're going to have to retrain again. And booting sucks. But it's fine for something like this. And it looks like it might. Nope. OK, so it crashed right here last time. Let's see how much, how much further it gets. I don't know what voltage we're at. I think 1.28 right now. <clears throat> Sam says, safe boot has saved me a ton of times. Yes, it's very good. Grimmy 12. Oh, crashed. $5 Canadian. Yo, fam, I know you probably mentioned it before, but status on the dark mouse pads. Uh, actually, I haven't mentioned it for a while. So they are... If you mean like the, the black and blue, like the one I'm using over there, um, they're getting made. So we have them in production, and we're just waiting on them to exit production and to ship. So probably a couple weeks, something like that, maybe two to three. I'm not, I'm not positive, not guaranteeing it. But that would be my, uh, based on my experience with, with the same people who made this one, I think about two to three weeks maybe, before they come into us, and then they can go out to you. Haven't listed them on the store yet, though. That's nice. So more voltage. Need to continue raising V core. What do you use for inventory? Uh, Matt Merkel, five dollars. What do you use for inventory management software? Um, well, for the store, it's just uh, it's just all baked in. And then I saw the QR codes and was interested in it for my company. We don't use anything for like right now. We don't have a system for scanning those codes. I looked into it briefly. And we got a um, 1.3 volts. We had a scanner, and I had some software, and it worked. But I wasn't too happy with it. So for now, we, we're just sticking the codes on there because I know there's good software. I, I, don't, I can't remember what it's called. Linus uses one that's pretty good, but I don't know if they're too happy with it. I'm not sure. But there's software out there where you can just scan it when you want to check it out or in or something. Um, so it's more preparation for the future. We're not actually using the codes yet. Okay, but you can use uh, visual databases for good inventory tracking. All right, so 1.30 volts is our new setting, and we'll see if this one holds at 4.9 gigahertz. And if it does, I'm gonna have to check on the temperatures because we're, we're really climbing pretty fast in voltage, and that's gonna make the temperatures climb as well. Uh, let's show system again, it's been a little while. So if you missed it, and sorry if this is repeat, but it's a uh, Mora 420 radiator, four an octa with 200 millimeter fans. Kind of fun to look at anyway. And um, it has a special mounting bracket for those. Not really meant for them. I think you can mount 9120s on it or something to that effect. And, oh, no, wait, 9140s? 9369, 9140s can go on there. So uh, the backside has four 140s on it. We kind of we just stopped short. It could do more, but it's in a push-pull, and the top, like, I don't know, 30%, 35% has uh, uh, four 140s on it. And those are on there because they're helping guide the air over the VRM where I want more specifically because it's cold air coming out. It's cool. And then a DDC, dual DDC pump from EK, big EK reservoir, and this is all hooked up by ZMT tubing, uh, which will be helpful. So I've got QDCs in it this time, so quick disconnect like right here, and I have two of those in there, three of those in there, um, where you can just disconnect the radiator and dunk it in an ice bucket. And that obviously was intentional, so we can do that in a future stream if we want to. Uh, and then the bench is an X299 dark motherboard, which we've used for all of these X299 overclocking streams. Uh, card is an RTX 2080 Ti FTW3 doing absolutely nothing right now. It's like no graphics benchmarking. The fans don't even spin during these. Uh, G skill trying to see black for memory. Okay, what's our current uh, amperage? Where? Oh no, I missed the test, so I can't see what it is. Did it pass? That means it passed. Hey, it passed. Eleven thousand three fifty-eight. So one point three was was stable. Four point nine gigahertz. Finally, one point three zero volts stable at 
11,358. <laughs> uh, we got a long way to go to 12,400, but maybe with some memory overclocking, I can get us to, to get some gains a bit faster. So a quick test here before I reboot and push things further. We need to see what kind of temperatures we're sitting at right now, and I would also like to see the power consumption. So we'll check hardware info after this run and just see what the, the maxes are. Check power consumption during the run. Uh, Adam Schumann Sr., $5. When do the new mouse pads go up on the store? Blue and black. Also, still waiting for Snowflake and Midnight Plush figures. Yes, we are, we are aware of the demand for that um, and have discussed it. Uh, new mouse pads, like I said, probably a couple, like maybe three weeks, let's call it, but hopefully a bit sooner, maybe two. I guess with potential holidays and shipping delays, it might be more like three. Bruno Cabral, uh, $10 in the, in the letter R for the currency, because that's all YouTube tells me about it. After D-Lid and Liquid Metal, my 7700K, oh, I need to check the power. 34 amps, 35 amps occasionally. So if you're wondering about the power, but it's plus or minus 0.4 right now. Uh, it's about 400 watts, a little more actually. It's like 420 watts. Do something with that. Uh, D-Lid and Liquid Metal, 7700K runs at 5.3 gigahertz. That's really high. Oh, 1.525 volts. That's also really high. Or 5.2, 1.45 volts. Both ABX stable, prime 27.9 load, max temps around 75 to 65, respectively, package and uh, hot core. We're running this 24-7 degrade my CPU. I can't answer that with certainty, but um, things like SA and uh, SOC on AMD will for sure degrade stuff if you push them too high. 1.5 I feel pretty uncomfortable with, though. I will say that. 1.53 is what you're at for voltage, which just, uh, I don't know. I would be curious. How? Oh, yes. I forgot. I cut my finger open on that radiator. So touching anything with it hurts. Um, I would be curious if it's actually at 1.53 volts or if there's a lot of V droop. Uh, what you should do is check your load line calibration setting. You might already know this if you're that high of a uh, frequency. Check load line calibration and see, um, see uh, what you're at for the LLC. Because if you're typing in 1.53, but it's actually putting out like 1.4, then that's a, obviously a huge difference that should be accounted for. But if it's genuinely 1.53, I, I would say I'd, I'd prefer to step it down personally. Um, okay, so our hottest temperatures here are in the 70s, I think. I don't see any 80s yet. We're, we're actually doing pretty well. This is really shockingly good. So giant radiator running test for only a minute, of course, and um, solder. So better than thermal paste, but worse than liquid metal. Working out pretty well for us today. What's chat saying? Are you selling this cooling for the 9900K? Uh, <laughs> you bled for this thing, someone says. You remember, you remember the motherboard rant video. Yes, yes, he, the author of that article did say, I bled for this thing when talking about how awful it is to build your own computer. <laughs> um, so Watercool, to answer the question about selling it, Watercool sells these radiators. And as for the 9900K, we have some ideas, but uh, not ready yet with them. 50? Let's try 50. Let's try 5 gigahertz all cores. That would be, we're already doing better than our 7980XE. Except for the ice part, but I also need to really push memory. That's getting uh, kind of old. That XMP is, is not really good. How are you measuring power consumption? So I, when I gave the number a minute ago, it's not total system. It is at the EPS 12 volt cables. So that is uh, like CPU plus VRM efficiency losses, power consumption. Super chats. We got, come back. Clover Maple, $5 Canadian, approximately 15 American cents for you, sir. I love the show. I love you. Well, thank you, Clover Maple. Much appreciated. Uh, Linus, Linus was also throwing pennies at me in a previous stream, although I think his, his was a little less kind. <laughs> of course, all, all in good fun. I threw pennies at him later, except my pennies were worth more, so he got more money. 
out of the deal than I did. <laughs> okay. Well, we're still at 1.3 volts. I... No, they're not going to trick me that time. I'm pretty sure it's not stable. Uh, so I might just start pushing that voltage up a bit more. Sam, will you test SLI scaling in your RTX testing? We are certainly uh, looking into it actually right now in the other room. Uh, Minoku, 90. 499. Thank you. Here's a few bucks for office snacks. Much appreciated. We go through them quickly. Also, update on the blue black mouse pads. These are really popular. Um, I know you all like submitted the questions obviously before I answered it. So, uh, but yeah, just just in case, like maybe calling it about three weeks. I'm hoping for two, but I think realistically like three. It's not listed on the store yet. So, okay, got a store order. Mod mat autographed. Thank you very much. So Mark from Texas picked up an autographed mod mat. Crashed immediately. Thank you for picking that up. Uh, like I said, the mod mat is is my favorite product we sell because it's completely custom. It's really high build quality, we think. And uh, also, I use it every day. So we, I'm always excited to see those sell because people seem to like them. And that that's good. <laughs> that's... That's what I want. That's what I would like in the products that we make. Uh, so those are shipping. We'll be getting them in the first half of December. If you're in the U.S., there's a very good chance you'll get it before Christmas, uh, barring any weird shipping issues. And international, of course, we will try our best. But international can be tricky sometimes, depending on how far it's going. All right, let's push this. So 5.0. Let's turn NumLock lock on first. Apparently, let's do 1.3. To and just see if we can get that clock stable. And then I, I want to push XMP or turn off XMP after that and push the uh, the memory frequency and timings. Is that picking up on the mic? <laughs> Some loud noises near us. Okay. Steve Streza in chat and Serpent XSF. Hello. Serpent and, and Streza. Good to see you guys. No one is getting 5 gigahertz before 1.4 volts. I did it on the 7980XT, actually. Uh, although 1.4 made it a lot easier. But, I mean, that's part of the, what we're doing here is um, I haven't had a chance to really test how this one scales. With the, I mean, it's it's supposed to be a bit more mature as a chip than the first one we had, so we'll see if it scales any better. It might be a better bin. I don't know. Jay's 7980DXE was crazy. It was like the most golden sampled CPU I've ever seen, and I do not think we got one of those here, but uh, it would be nice. One, one can dream to have CPUs uh, as good as the ones Jay ends up with. Righteous Bruce, I'm in the pub watching you. Pretty pretty cool uh, that you actually definitely are not watching it on the TVs there. But <laughs> on your phone still counts. I miss when um, when StarCraft was big enough that people were starting to play it in in bars. Like, uh, what do they call it? Barcraft, they called it. Never went to one and watched it. But I liked watching the esports events um, at around the same time. GSL, GSTL were good, and uh, I think they've all been revived. I haven't watched though. Do you play Star Citizen? No, uh, but we do have like 50 interviews with Chris Roberts and the rest of his team from years ago. Point three six. Why not? We will see if this one dies. What CPU is it? It's the 9980XE. Okay, let me catch up on Super Chats a bit. About 40 minutes behind on them now, but if I do like 10, I can be only 20 minutes behind on them. Um, Strider Leon, $1, no message, thank you. Uh, <laughs> next one. It's $2, and it's regular, regular Super Chat. K 
Can you T-pose for 10 seconds? My, I'm being told by, uh, I'm being told by legal counsel, the camera operator, Andrew, not to do it. <laughs> I do appreciate that it's the same exact message every time, though. All lowercase, no dash between T and pose, no punctuation. <laughs> T pose. I don't, I don't trust why you would need that. Mr. Wobbles, $5. Hello, computer god. What would you recommend for a streamer, editor, musician, YouTuber between the 9900K and 9940X with no real budget cap? Um, between them, 40X is the 14 core. The question, I guess, is how much uh, does your software leverage the cores? Because there's some production software we've seen, like Photoshop, that really likes frequency to a point where 9900K is is most of the time better than a 7980XE or 9980XE. In our testing, we showed that. Um, the, what was it, Premiere tests we did, definitely are favored on the 9980XE. If you do video production, uh, I wouldn't recommend buying that one just because of the price and you're talking about, wow, that was that sounded like uh, overcurrent or something. Overcurrent or over, over temperature? Not sure which. That was a shutdown though. I guess probably over temperature. So we should not be going over current. Anyway, um, I liked the 7960X a lot. And I guess the 9960X is basically the same thing. I liked that CPU a lot because it was a good balance. The 9940X is fine too. Buildzoid uses the 7940X, or used to anyway. Um, but it just depends on the software. Because, like, for Premiere, I would be tempted to go 9900K to save a whole lot of money. I know you say it's no object, but I uh, save a whole lot of money. You could always put it towards like another camera or maybe new lights or something like that too, and um, enable the IG IGP and do software encoding, and you get pretty damn good performance. It's not quite as good as the high core count CPUs, but it's pretty damn good. So let's go back down to 49. We can maybe try 50 on a few cores a little bit later. Uh, but first, I am curious to see how high this mesh goes. Well, I'm curious. Let's get the memory back up first. 4,000. Might need to push that voltage more later. And we can push those a bit more later, too. Well, no, let's just do it all now. Let's see. Let's see what profiles I have left over to make this faster. RIP stable 3600 black edition. Okay. And then we're going to have to step down some things. So previously, here's this is very convenient. Here are our settings for the 7980XE with liquid metal and an ice bucket. We're at 51 on four cores, and then 50 on the rest, and then 34 on mesh. This was a good overclock, uh, but it was on a much cooler setup, subambient. And then we had 1.46 volts for 51X on four cores. So we're obviously changing that. We're obviously going to change this too down to 49. And we'll try to step up maybe four cores to 50 later. And then we had previously 1.38 for VMesh. That is so high. I was at only like 1.1 here a second ago. So let's step that down to 32 because I know that's stable. 1.1, or I think it is. SA doesn't really need to be increased right now. Um, and then I.O. doesn't really need an increase. We're at 1.1 previously for that, although we might have to push it with some of the memory clocks. 500 is good. OK, I think we're good to go. Let's try that. Actually, I need to double check the memory. Yeah, OK, let's try that. And the memory gets some cooling this time. doesn't really need it, but it's got those giant fans pushing air onto it. Daytalk, 199. What CPU is that? 9980XE. Damn it. Uh, Alex Myers, $5. Here's some NC monies. Don't drown in all this rain. There's quite a bit of it. We could, we could harvest it for liquid cooling today. Exxon, $5. What are your thoughts on Noctua's Redux lineup as compared to their standard offerings? Uh, honestly, no real thoughts other than the gray, I guess. So like you've got, you could go brown or you could go gray. And then later they realize that like, oh, we're adding colors. We should add something standard like a black Chromax version or whatever. 
No real thoughts, though. Um, on the Patreon behind the scenes thing, I, uh, stream, I have a uh, fan testing update there. And we're not there yet. But once I can actually do it, um, once I am unburied from all these product launches one after another, then we can start looking into actual thoughts on, on that question. So we've done a memory overclock here. Let's see if that holds. And um, like I said, picking stuff up from the store tonight is one of the best ways to support our streams if you enjoy watching them. We have uh, big and small things. You get a keychain for 10 bucks. We've got stickers on there, uh, basically like almost uh, bumper sticker style decals. And then we have the mod mats, of course, which are coming in soon. We have the Raglan hoodies. We're just restocked for a two-tone lightweight hoodie. And then we've got things like the beer glasses and the ceramic mugs as well. I have a lot of things on there. We have some good variety. So check it out on store.gamersnexus.net. I'll shout out your first name and where you're from if you pick something up during the stream. Is it alive? <laughs> I don't think it's alive, but we'll leave it alone for a second. Tim Reddington, $5. Do you or your team drink craft beer? I live in Western Mass, so I have Treehouse, Trillium, uh, Hetty Topper, etc. in my backyard. I don't think any of us do. <laughs> but um, I know some guys who do drink, who do drink craft beer and beer in general. And they also do streams and sometimes occasionally get blasted in the face by uh, the bottles that they open. Talking, of course, about Paul and Kyle. I think they would have been live a couple days ago. I don't know if they skipped this week or not. Please boot. OK. So that was no good. Let's, um, let's bump IO a bit and see if that helps. Didn't really push mesh any crazy amount. It's where it was. But pushed, um, pushed memory. So probably need to bump IO a bit. The rest should be stable. OK. I O. 1. Oh, no, 1.2. Let's do that. 1.1. The mesh can stay as it is. OK, let's try that. Uh, Grimmy, 12. $10, thank you. Hey, hello, here's more money for my guy, Mr. Jesus, man. Are all radiators with decent pumps effectively equal when you're replacing the fans anyway? I like Fractal, but, oh, I think you were asking about the CLCs earlier. But if bad uh, besides fans, I can avoid. I, it's not bad beside the fan. I mean, like, the the um, the Fractal CLCs are just Asetek CLCs like all the other Asetek CLCs. So if you're replacing the fans anyway, and you can find a good deal on it, maybe you like how the pump and the radiator look or something, uh, or you like the sleeving or whatever, then it's going to be the same as everything else once you equalize the fans. They're very small differences. So the difference is between, actually, I'm going to just let it boot. The difference is between Coolit, Ace Attack, uh, Dynatron, Apoltec. Those are different suppliers for the CLCs. But um, it still says Rip J for the username. But uh, if you're all within the same supplier, like all A's attack, and they're all same radiator size, and you equalize the fans, then they're, they're going to be more or less the same. They will be within manufacturing variants where the performance at that point is dictated more by the pump speed, uh, which is just variable. It's, it's, it is, um, it's about plus or minus 10% speed from unit to unit. OK, well, at least we got a blue screen this time instead of a freeze. To that restart. <clears throat> so maybe a bit more voltage or something. Adam says, I run only maglev fans. They're fine fans. They do pretty well. The One of our maglevs recently won in a battle against the Gentle Typhoon fan. Not benchmarking, but because the Gentle Typhoon fan blade fell into the maglev blade, and then the maglev won. <laughs> So kudos to Corsair's engineering department, I guess. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't know. Did I adjust the right one? Yes. Let's do 1.15. Should be plenty. 
I don't know, maybe the timings aren't uh, stable anymore. Might have to train into it. Okay, so we got... <laughs> some of these comments. Talking about fans, Mr. Dr. Cheese in chat says, smiley face, the only fan I have is my mom. <laughs> and then, uh, Typhoon fans are brittle, Grom says. Yes, that much was apparent when it shattered. Not really an intended use case, to be fair. I do like the Typhoons a lot. They're, they were probably my favorite fan for a long time. But they're not meant to go into battle with other fans. Still not, not stable, so might need to step back on the memory a bit, which is sad because these settings were stable previously, but it always gets a bit fidgety when you're going between overclocking setups. I actually have a something pretty cool we can show off while this is figuring out its life. Um, so this is pretty neat. That is uh, that is from MSI. Really cool. So this is an old lightning board, obviously. Does anybody know which lightning it is? It's it's a bit customized. I'll walk you through why in a second uh, as I dial back some of the stuff in BIOS. Okay, bit customized. Anyone know what lightning that is? So this is an MSI lightning and the um, it does not have a GPU on it. That's why it's kind of interesting. 770, getting close. Uh, oh, I got a message from my distributor. I adjusted your mug stock. He says they are back in stock for the one mug quantity. Okay, cool. Uh, 780 Ti is correct. So this is the 780 Ti Lightning. And the reason it's cool is because it's actually not genuinely a 780 Ti Lightning. It is a modified 780 Ti Lightning. So they only had a few of these. I think they made like 50 of them or something. And um, this is pre-attachment of uh, all the service mount devices. So you don't have any memory on there. You don't have the GPU on there. I can actually bring a GPU over too. Give me one second. So this GPU is from NVIDIA when I toured their offices in 2012. And it's not, it's not the same one. I don't, I mean, it's definitely not the same one. I don't think it's the same one. <laughs> Definitely not the same one, but that's where it would go. So that's kind of what they look like. Um, attach it like that uh, with the uh, solder. But anyway, pre-attachment for this stuff. And then the VRM is custom. That's why this is a bit different. So these fats up here, this goes to the memory. So they relocated it for this card. It was made for overclocking events. And that's the memory VRM on this one. And then they expanded the vCore VRM significantly that's actually really cool. Pretty cool custom board MSI uh, dropped off for us. And it has three power headers. It was doing uh, genuinely extreme overclocking though, so it needed them. Or at least could make use of them anyway. Asus Aries Strix Vega 64OC, someone says. I don't know what the context is, but I read their comment, I guess. Um, so what even happened there? Just shut down or something? I don't know. Where's our instability? T4 should be fine. Maybe 260 might be a bit aggressive on refresh cycle. Oops. Let's try 300 here. Just trying to get it to boot with a set of memory timings that are a bit better. <laughs> Should I delid my GPU? Uh, no, because if you try to do that, you're, the only thing there is to die. So there's nothing, there's no lid to take off. <laughs> Don't do that. 
like rip the the actual silicon off. Yeah, so that's that's what your GPU looks like underneath for the person who asks. I don't know if you're serious or not, but if you were, don't try and delay your GPU because you can't. You can take the cooler off and it looks about like this, and you can replace the thermal paste. I wouldn't recommend liquid metal for GPU. It's not really worth it. They already have direct eye contact to the the heat sink, so kind of becomes pointless at some point. Okay. Will it survive? We got a couple of super chat, actually a lot to catch up on. Um, so like I said, I'll get through all these super chats tonight. Just yeah, keep in mind I run a bit behind because of the, the volume of everything we're doing all at once and also the store orders. Like I got to read off three new store orders for the people who are supporting the live stream. Thank you. So super chats. Um, please load. Thoughts on Phoenix, 499. Thank you. Thoughts on Noctua's industrial fans for a custom loop. They are rated over three, th three times the static pressure of the non-industrial fans. Looking to get a 45 millimeter plus radiator. If it's a fat radiator, more pressure will help. Um, they're good. I mean, like I have one on here and it's really loud. We should actually, if I get this to boot again, uh, I should show you the, the volume difference. But um, they're loud. So if you're okay with loud, and maybe it's like a server setup or something like that, enterprise setup, production setup, where you don't care about the noise, maybe, uh, yeah, they're good, but it's kind of brutal. It's nice if you have headroom to run a, a fan curve and just keep them at 50% most of the time, and then burst for high load. Leviathan Prim, $5. Hello, GN. How goes the overclocking so far? It's at 8.43 p.m. It was going very well at 8.43 p.m. Right now we're stuck. Because um, I tried to change too much at once, so I'm probably going to revert a lot of that. But I think our most recent score, our goal is about 12,400 points, which is probably not achievable uh, without ice. And we are currently at 11,358. So we're 1,000 points away, which is pretty damn good. If I can get the memory working, we might be okay. I just don't know. Uh, that blew away the settings. Nice. Uh, it's, is that going to work? Yeah, nice. Load last save settings is a great button. So <laughs> let's do this. Let's kill the memory profile and then apply XMP. And what I'm going to do is see if that's stable. And if that's stable, that means that we are unstable because of the memory. And if it's not stable, then that means I need to look at probably mesh or core. So I'll just narrow down the point of failure. Okay. Just XMP this time. Uh, one, point, one point one, sure. Maybe mesh might need some more voltage. We'll see. There's a lot of points of failure once you start changing everything. Uh, the grave accent, two dollars. Desolder it, delit it, make it even more pointless. Well, I, considering the chances of it dying, yes. <laughs> Crab Gerard, uh, four sixty nine. Thank you. <laughs> Can you say Eric CBA? You got VRM cocked. Okay, Materius, two dollars. Did you turn off two cores since you're doing three D mark? Answer that one earlier. No, uh, we're doing Time Spy Extreme, which actually does benefit from the extra cores. I've, I've tested that one; it does benefit from them. Actually, pretty noticeably, uh, it's like a couple thousand points if you start turning off a bunch of cores. Maybe not for two, but it's a lot. Okay, so if it's alive and it doesn't die this time, then we can assume it was the memory overclock. And we can start fixing things. Okay. <clears throat> trying to keep up with, what's mesh? Is it only for X-Series processors? Mesh, yes, is for X-Series. Uh, basically, Uncore is the idea for that one. Store orders, thank you for purchasing stuff. So we got Robert from uh, Thermont, picked up two of the mugs. Thank you, Robert. 
Mugs, do we, do we have one out somewhere? Yes. <clears throat> so glass, glassware, drinkware is uh, really popular with our audience for some reason in particular. And we've got the mug and we've got the beer glass. We've got a, a couple purchases of those things today. So thank you for picking that up, Robert. And then we had this, by the way, has been one of our longest selling items and it always does really well. I guess because the high contrast looks pretty cool. We had uh, Karen from Baltimore picked up an, a, a signed mod mat. Thank you for picking up one of those. Those will be in the US in the first half of December. We'll be shipping them out immediately when we get them after I sign that one, apparently. And uh, then we had David from Georgia pick up a mod mat as well. So thank you for all those orders. Mod mat's coming in soon. This looks like it is finishing this time. So it looked, looked frozen for a second there, but it's going. So this will be in soon. And uh, this run, we, we have some cool footage we need to show of how those are made to some extent. Because it's pretty interesting. It takes a very long time to make one of them, uh, which is it's just, uh, it's good because, I mean, the quality is high. 11,371. Is that it's just higher from variance, I guess. Oh no, not that much higher. Okay. So we were at 11.358 before. That's 11.371, it's within variance. Okay, so it worked. So memory was not happy, uh, which is a, a solvable problem because this memory has worked before with, with the settings that were in there. And we just need to maybe dial it back a bit or something. I had it under ice last time, so the voltages I was pushing on IO and SA and mesh and everything were a bit, a bit abusive for where we are today for cooling. Although the cooler is it's very impressive. It's not quite ice. Okay, so this does 4,000 for sure, no problem. Um, I th 15 really should be fine, but let's... 15 was fine last time, so I want it to be 15 again. Uh, this should be able to do 28, but let's do 30, because I think 28 is sometimes difficult on this one. 38 should be stable for it. Fa. Uh, don't remember what I had TRC to. I'll have to go look. Actually, let's just do this. Let's load that profile again, and then step everything back. That should be the easiest. So 1.3, uh, get back to the rest of those in a second. We go 49 for everything. Mesh, we haven't pushed past 32 yet on this board, but let's kind of limit what we're changing. Uh, VIN 1.95, 1.3 for V core. Let's do 1.2 for, uh, yeah, let's do 1.2 for mesh. We'll bump that up more than we had before. We're at 1.185 previously for SA, 1.33 for IO, let's try 1.25 on IO, 500 uncore. So let's, let's do that. That's just higher voltages on mesh. If that's no good, I'll step some stuff back on the timing side. Okay. <laughs> just reading chat, it's, it's people talking about Mercury and its evaporative properties and how poisonous it is. I love seeing the random things chat is talking about. Okay. Uh, so we got some super chats in to go through from previously. We had Medarius, $2. So it doesn't give you any extra OC headroom relating to turning off cores. Uh, it probably does, but the cores help more in Time Spy Extreme. It, it really likes frequency and threads, but it likes threads a lot. So I think this is still no-go on that. Let's give it another shot. See if we can just train its way into booting. <clears throat> what is the Serpent XSF? What's the current clamp reading from 12 volts once you get it stable? Um, I think we were pushing 548 watts in Blender with, uh, with 4.6 gigahertz at 1.25, which is what was required to remain stable for half an hour. So it's a lot. There's a lot of wattage. 
This may have... Mm, maybe not. Almost trained into booting. We're kind of borderline stable here. No, that's not true. We're borderline booting here. Let's try changing a few things. I really just want this, these timings because I think it'll get us really close to the, the 12,000 mark that I want. Go to sleep. Okay. All right. Dan Carlson, you can reboot to UEFI running shutdown slash R slash FW. Yes, or I can push the, the safe boot button, but that will also work. The Martin C123, five GBP, thank you. Can we have an ice cube in the radiator? And please tell me, and please, and please tell me cameraman that he is doing a great job. Got a, a pirate in the audience. You gotta tell him. Yeah, that's right. I gotta tell him. Please tell me, cameraman, that is, okay. Cameraman, that he is doing a great job. Okay, I have, I've completed my end of the agreement. Uh, I don't know, 1.3. That's no good, I gotta step back the timings because we're gonna start running too hot. An ice cube in the radiator. We do an ice cube in the reservoir. If enough people, chant for an ice cube before the end of the stream. I'll put one in the reservoir. Uh, can we get, okay, I had to scroll back. I had to find your message. Can we ice cube? All right, there it is. Casey Hancock, $1, no message. Thank you. FDM, WOP, $13.99. Thank you. Uh, Steve, what CPU is this not? <laughs> Keep up the great work. Thanks for all the info you supply the community. What CPU is this not? Is is quite a lot of CPUs. Uh, <laughs> you're clever. I'll give you that. It's very clever. But I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna fall for it. Uh, we have a whole box of CPUs that it is not from our fan mail live stream. Mostly old ones. They're pretty cool though. All right. So, memory timings need to stop stop being uh, as good as they were last time. I, I just have to have to accept that's not going to happen. <laughs> Alex Myers, two dollars, thank you. Shutdown switch was a command switch, not the motherboard. Oh, he was talking about earlier when someone was saying something about shutdown switch. Uh, data file, ten dollars. Steve, why are you overcompensating with that big old car radiator? Are you trying to send messages to EKWB? You're saying their hardware isn't big enough. Uh, yeah, so I, it's actually not. The 540, 540 would do well, but this seems like more fun. I don't want that. OC robot. We should do that before the end of the stream or something. Has chat chanted about an ice cube yet? Yep, they're doing it. Ice cube himself is going to, going to show up. Uh, all right, so this comes back down, first of all, and this probably can come back down. And then memory needs to go worse in this category. Let's try and leave forward is, try and leave TCWL at 16, one command rate. Let's go up to 300 on RFC. I'm just gonna increase like everything until it works. Okay. Chat really wants an ice cube. Damn it. The ice tray doesn't, hasn't been filled. I don't want to open this for one ice cube. Uh. All right. I 
get one. I think I also need to take the cap off of the, the reservoir. One ice cube is all you get. We win. So what's the temps? Well, they're about to be zero degrees Celsius when I put this ice cube in there. You just wait. Some water will be close to zero. Okay. How much, how much does chat want this? This will stabilize our system so that we can actually boot. What's chat saying right now? I'll go read it in a second. Are you ready for this? We have to be really careful. This could cause a reaction. Okay. <laughs> Do like the Star Trek red alert shake. <laughs> Chat's so hyped on this ice cube. I like how it's somersaulting. Yes, that will change everything. It'll cause just enough condensation on something to kill a component. <laughs> Gasp. Yes, that was, uh, that's what everyone wanted, I think, with Hades Canyon when we were overclocking the knock. Now you got your ice cube. I need to save the rest of these for actual use. Two ice cubes, hype. They say the camera shake was rad. Andrew says, <laughs> not rad, apparently. Sorry. Uh, Fa, maybe? Why are you doing this to me? Uh, okay. I bet it doesn't take long to melt. Well, you're correct. So uh, you can see a little dip in the surface tension at the top from where it was. Too bad it didn't get sucked through the, through the pump, clog everything. Leave us now, the ice cube will take it from here. <laughs> Just put your system in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, that would do something. So it booted this time. See if it can hold. It, it got past the Windows loading screen. Nope. <laughs> it really doesn't like that memory overclock. That's unfortunate. So I want it to work. Next time we look at the reservoir, it's wine. Uh, Ivocati Productions, $10. I have a PBO OC 2700X with an SOC of 1.044 that just now started logging uh, WHEA machine check bus interconnect errors, always on core five. No crashing though. Is it reasonable to assume it's the SOC voltage? Uh, I don't know, 1.04 is pretty low, so you can try bumping it a bit, you have room. I don't know if that's what it is, but it's easy enough to check. It booted this, to, I don't know, is it, I hope it's not the 4000 that's unstable, that would be kind of weird. Since it has always worked before, let's do auto, 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 that should really be able to do 16, that should be able to do 20, but 
Uh, I have a feeling I might be RFC. Let's see if that works. Just start narrowing it down. Maybe it's frequency or something. Okay. Nathan Tipton, $5. Thank you. What's your favorite quality of life feature in enthusiast hardware since you've been working in the industry? That's a hard question. Um, safe, safe boot's a good one. What is a good quality of life feature? I th think, well, since I started cable management, I guess, because uh, the, I remember the Antec 900 specifically was the, like the most popular case that year. Antec still sells it. And um, it did not have any cable management. It just wasn't a thing yet. No one, no one did that. So KO management's gotten big, and I would say that's probably the, one of the biggest improvements over the last decade or so. That is a good question, though. Um, toggles to switch from multi and single rail, that's pretty nice. Casey Hancock, $2. 9 gigahertz at 9 volts for the win. Nope. Not for the win. Uh, DJ Oreo, $10. Question, when water cooling two GPUs and SLI in a custom loop, have you ever seen or have any data, have you seen or have any data as to if both cards receive equal flow in a parallel config? I am not sure. Um, I, would rec I would highly recommend Thermal Bench. Is, does he still, is it Thermal Bench? Not .net, is it .com? Yes, thermalbench.com, VSG. Um, he works for Tech Power Up, I think, occasionally or something. But thermalbench.com was a site that he definitely maintained, if not still maintains. And that has a lot of really good flow tests. He has flow meters and everything. It's pretty high end stuff. OK, so I'm thinking frequency here, which is awful. Um, What if I change something else? Let's try a few things. That should be fine. Okay, let's try a few things. I really want that to hold, and I, I feel like if it's just crashing without any of the timing to tighten, then it's got to be like. Frequency, and I know that does 4,000 or voltage. Paul's hardware had issues with memory frequency. Everyone has issues with memory frequency. I was talking to Bill Zoid about this, how memory overclocking is like the absolute most boring possible thing you could show. OK, got a couple store orders. Fortunately, chat keeps it really interesting. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, not interesting to just change the numbers till they work for memory. Uh, Robert from Oklahoma picked up a keychain. Thank you, Robert. And one of the anniversary mugs as well. Much appreciated. It's booting, sort of. You got Christian in Sunnyvale. You're out near, uh, near AMD. Picked up a cobalt blue teardown pint glass. Thank you, Christian, for picking that up. OK, it's in. Is that, is that the best it's going to do? Is it going to actually load stuff? The mouse kind of froze for half a second, so that's not a good sign. But there is the remnant of an ice cube in the reservoir now in the form of water. Uh, that's OK, well, I got, got further than previously. Hmm. <laughs> The CPU, though, is 26 degrees. Well, it's, it's doing nothing in an ambient of probably like 23 or something, so that's pretty good. All right, I just want this to run again. Our last score was 11.371. And we need like over 1.4 volts probably to push the CPU higher at this point. So that's not really going anywhere without ice. 
Uh, but 49 is very good. Nothing to be upset about, especially because we're not on any crazy cooling right now. Oh, wait. We're not on any crazy, any sub-ambient cooling right now. Um, don't know what I really have room for. Please work. Okay. I don't know. Kind of out of room on IO. 1.35 is not where I want to be with that, so I'm going to step that back in a second. Uh, Super Chats. Christian Calderon, $10. Needs 18 Noctua NF A14 industrial fans at 3,000 RPM. Make the hair flow. It's, I mean, 3,000 RPM is an awful lot for those fans. And eight, 18 would populate the whole thing. You'd fit nine on each side, so you could do it. Probably have to wear hearing protection, though. OK, well, that is not going to work for us. So let's uh, everything step, step back the frequency, I guess, on the memory. Just try and get a run in there. That memory can definitely hold the frequency. It's just not doing it for me today, which we've seen before. And it could be IMC quality on the CPU. I don't know. Might be bad, bad IMC or something. And I'm trying my hardest to make it worse. <laughs> OK. So we got Matt Brewer, 499. Can we see the effect of 2080 Ti SLI on ray tracing performance? Uh, it is something we are looking into. Griffin, $5. Hey, Steve, was wondering if you know anything about Chromax AF A12 by 25s. No, actually, I don't. I talked to them about that at Computex in June, and I don't think they had any current plans, but I know we, we for sure talked with them about it. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think they had an immediate launch window at that time. Yeah. Be mesh. Let's do 1.2. All of that should be fine. Memory's got to step back, which is really unfortunate um, because all of this has held in the past. So we'll see what happens. Uh, As in the chat for Andrew, the best cameraman and 3D modeler. I don't know what this is in reference to. There's something I missed earlier. Is the room getting warmer? It's a bit, bit warmer than it was originally. <laughs> but now, with a one degree Fahrenheit temperature reduction, <laughs> now we will be unbeatable. Is everyone saying A? Are they saying A to make it work? Is that like the opposite of F? <laughs> it's trying. <laughs> uh, so all I've done is step back the frequency. I even dropped the voltages back to more reasonable levels for all the auxiliary stuff. Chat has been saying a lot of A's, which will make it work, apparently. Uh, we got a super chat from Dalton Fair. $5, thank you. My Strix 10 ATI OC runs in PCIe 8X only mode, for whatever reason, on a Maximus 10 Hero. Uh, no performance loss notice. You, you probably won't see any performance loss, so that's the good thing. It's not really enough going on there. Uh, it doesn't need the throughput of 16x. So you're good there. My guess would be a, there's a BIOS setting where you can change the PCIe generation in the Maximus 10 Hero. And so if you go look for that setting, I think it's under the, I think there's like a PCI subsystem or like a PCH tab or something like that. 
But go dig through the tab. It's not under the main frequency or um, extreme twe tweaker tab. It's a different one. And you can change the PCIe generation. So change that to 3.0, and then you should be good. If that's the problem. I don't know. Uh, I guess also make sure the slot is physically wired for 16. But if it was already running that way, then. Also, this is kind of going now. I'm saying kind of because I'm afraid of it. But it's kind of going. The stream is rated A for Andrew. That's what the A is for. Nice. nice. <laughs> if I gave you $5, would you say meow? Nope. <laughs> Sam says, keep the memory below 3,800. The board freaks out at 4,000 plus. No, it, it's worked. This one has worked several times at 4,000, um, like in multiple streams. It's just not doing it this time. But 3800 is working, so that's good. Maybe we can try some tighter timings. So our previous score, finally getting scores again after all that time. <laughs> previous score, 11371, and that's 11698. So that is quite a climb. 4.9, 1.3. Uh, I have to look at all of our other settings and write them down. 11698, OK? Let's write down all the other settings. And then pull the timings back in for the memory, because I reset everything from the instability. So apparently it was the frequency after all, the thing I least expected. We got a comment from 999 from Center Negative. Thank you. Why has aluminum as a case material dwindled so much in popularity? Even Lian Li has moved almost entirely to SECC and glass. Here's money to stop mentioning LTT. Those maple. It's, I'm, I'm not sure if I should say the rest of it, but <laughs> so <laughs> aluminum is really expensive. It's expensive to make. It takes a lot of machine time. The material itself is expensive. Um, and I would assume that it's entirely cost driven. So Lian Lee has been known for aluminum for a long time now. Lian Lee also wants to make things that actually sell in any kind of volume greater than a couple hundred units. So I think they're starting to do more steel and, and some plastic, too, which is fair. Aluminum is very expensive. Um, I, I think that's probably why. I mean, you, can, you don't get quite the, uh, quite the build quality with steel, but it's still pretty good. So I guess as long as they're targeting good enough, then it's cheaper. Uh, OK. Kogarin, $5. Hey, Steve, I'm trying to upgrade from an i5-6600K 4.5 gigahertz to Ryzen 2. Which would you recommend? A 2700, 2700X. 2700 and then overclock it. That is my firm recommendation for that. You don't have to go through what I'm going through tonight. It's, it's easy. You need to do, type in 4.0 or 40 or 3.9. What if, actually, you go higher on Ryzen 2. You do like 42 maybe, 41, 42. Let's go for like 42 and increment the voltage a bit and uh, see how that works for you. No, not one. We're not doing one for TRCD. Let's see if that's stable. 3800 was stable. Let's see if we can get CL15. <sighs> Madarius, $2. We just want to crucify you on a 2080 Ti. <laughs> uh, well, it's hot enough. Daniel Giorgio, $1. No message. Thank you. Data file, $5. Steve, it's for the meme T-Pose to assert your dominance. It would probably be funny since the whole principled technologies thing. Do you know what, the, what that is? Maybe there's, there's a T in technology. There's a T in technology? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. T-Pose. Okay, well, I'm, I'm so much happier now that this has worked once in the last 30 minutes. Not working at all was suboptimal, but it worked once. We'll see if it works again. CL15 now. So other than this MSI board, which was pretty cool, I mean, if you missed it earlier, it's just, it's a neat board because it's customized for, it was for an overclocking event, 780 Ti Lightning. They added more phases to the core VRM and they moved the memory VRM phases over here. Uh, and it doesn't have any of the parts soldered to it, so that's just kind of neat. But other than that, 
They also gave us, um, and this has been in the set background. Actually, it was in one video so far. Um, they also gave us this, which is a, a blank, complete blank PCB for, uh, actually, I'll, is it labeled on here? Yes, it is labeled on here. Hang on. Uh, I don't think the label's on this side. Does anyone know what that is? What motherboard that is? You might have already seen it. That's an MSI board. It doesn't have any parts on it yet. And um, it is uh, a, a pretty recent board, I'll say that. So do you know which one that is? You might have already seen it in the, the video playback. And the video is still catching up to where we are in reality. So, Also, the test is in the process of, of potential, is passing. So that's good. The test passed. So what is the motherboard for this PCB? TR4 Creation. There you go. That is what it is. So yes, uh, it's pretty cool. That's what it looks like before they put any of the parts on it. And then they use uh, pick and place machines to drop like uh, BIOS chips and MOSFETs and capacitors. They all go through SMT lines and pick and place lines. And they're pretty neat actually. They have, we have a video of, um, I think it's called how video cards are made or how motherboards are made. It's in the Gigabyte factory, same idea in Taiwan. And uh, the one they use there is like, <laughs> that motherboard is missing its motherboard. Um, so the pick and place machine they had there, they fill it with components like a Gatling gun. And it just goes through and like punches them down one after another. It's a really cool process to see. We have some videos of it on the channel. But uh, yeah, that's, there's a blank board, which is kind of cool. OK. So 11,751, that is an improvement. That's great. We wanted 12,400. We're getting kind of close, actually. 4.9, 1 1.3, uh, 3,800, CL15 is our settings. And I'll have to look at the voltages, too. Uh, so that was 11,751. Let's see if we can get this a little bit, a little bit further now. We're actually having some success now, so that's great. It's time to push it back to a point where it fails. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> this is bad that you have to use a car radiator because Intel CPUs are that high. Well, I mean, uh, it is a hot CPU, yes, but to be fair, it's at almost 5 gigahertz and it's at 1.3 volts and it's 18 cores. Um, so it's hot, yes, definitely, but I'm not helping it any. Okay, so let me write down these numbers before I, I forget them. And we'll save a profile later too. Um, so these specs, or these settings I had, 1.2 VSA, that's, no, 1.185 VSA, probably unnecessary. 1.3 IO, also probably unnecessary. Uh, boosted them all when, uh, before we dropped the frequency. And then one point Two V mesh. Okay. Okay, let's tune some other stuff. Uh, starting with all of these. Let's try twenty. Let's try two hundred and sixty. There, that's kind of aggressive, but. CKE start there. Let's see how that does. Can anyone see my comment? Nope, no one can see it. A <laughs> uh, couple of super chats and store orders actually. Did I get yours already? We had one from Leaf in uh, Washington, who picked up an autographed mod mat. Thank you, Leaf. We will be getting those in soon. I'll be signing a lot of them uh, as soon as they come in. So uh, thank you for picking that up. Big support for us 
to do these streams. Uh, next one is from, did you ever get that working? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. D did you find a test path yet or no? Yeah. Okay. Did you record it with OBS? Can you, uh, if you can do a recording that way, I can copy it later. That would be helpful. And then I can follow up with you on uh, after, I guess. Um, so we had uh, Michael in Pasadena picked up one of the mugs and one of the beer glasses. Thank you, Michael. Let's get a run going here. I should check on the temperatures at some point. Maybe after, if this one passes, I'll check the temperatures. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got one from Paul Robert in Scotland. Got a good, good journey to go. Picked up two of the cobalt blue beer glasses. Thank you, Paul Robert. Derek in Texas grabbed one of the mod mats. Thank you, Derek. It's launching. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Kyle in, uh, in Virginia picked up two of the ceramic mugs. Thank you, Kyle. Like I said, uh, these have been a really popular item for us ever since we got them in, like a year ago at this point. And then we have uh, another one from Martin in Illinois who picked up a beer glass. Thank you, Martin. Okay. Overclock the router. <laughs> Add another ice cube. My computer is getting full. How can you add more LAN? <laughs> Why? Chat doesn't change. <laughs> I, like to, I like knowing that YouTube is storing thousands of messages from the stream in perpetuity, uh, most of which say things like T pose, F, A, and ice cube. <laughs> Glad to know our data is being used on that. Keep it up. Uh, they gotta earn their they gotta earn their keep of the super chat donations. Sean Collins, five dollars Australian, thank you. About uh, fifty minutes behind the super chats, not as bad as it has been. I've I've brought you a beer. Enjoy it, mate. Thank you. Uh, would you comment on my build? I don't know where this link goes, and it's URL shortened, so I'm not gonna click on it. Uh, sorry, it may be completely legitimate, but. I don't want it to like crash anything. Eleven thousand nine twenty-two. Okay, nice. Really going up now. We're not far from from the ideal goal. CL fifteen, um, and then we changed so eleven nine twenty-two, and we changed to uh, what was it? TRFC to two sixty, and a couple others. Let's let's get a thermal measurement in here too, and let it do another pass. Okay, bench. All right, let's get some thermal numbers in. Zeta, moderator in chat, is telling me earlier, I asked them to do the A messages for Andrew, the best cameraman and 3D modeler. Okay, uh, Sean Sloys, $2. Love the vid, save an R3 1200, wait, love the vids, oh, have, there's no space there, sorry. Have a, an R3 1200, what would you recommend for up? For upgrades? Um, if you want to stick with your platform, if it's good enough, you could do like an R5 2600 or something. That's a pretty good upgrade. That's a big one. And it's somewhat generational. Just make sure your motherboard is, is good enough for it in the VRM department. Mustangs by Matt, $5. Western Digital 4 terabyte blue fared far better against the, <laughs> against the Glock 19 than the 1 terabyte did. Bullet resistant case uh, in the works. Still waiting for my 9900K and RMA Asus uh, 11 code. Yes, the the hard drive back there, the blue label one, 
if it's visible, is uh, from Mustangs by Matt. Sent it into our PO box, and uh, not super visible because of the radiator. And uh, it has a bullet wound. It, it's, it's it's very very sharp, but it's got a good bullet wound in it. Score eleven thousand nine seventeen. So that's about what it should be. And then the thermals this time is what we cared about. Wow, we're not breaching 70, uh, 75 on one core. That's really good, actually. This, this cooler setup is pretty impressive. A, question mark? I am typing an email address. I have the letter A on the keyboard, but how do I get the circle around it? Uh, fire on a wire, two dollars. What CPU are you using? Here's two dollars for cat treats. Uh, so, uh, it's more like Snowflake will be more like here's thirty cents for human treats. She she actually handles all of the finances for the channel. Uh, it is a ninety nine eighty XE to answer the question. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Finally, but I'm also out of room on things I can do. Uh, so I don't know. I don't, I don't have much else I can do here. We could try for 14 and see how 14, but I'm not sure that's going to work. Um, <clears throat> can pull back some of the timings a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I think at this point I'm not going to get like another 500 points out of memory. So it would have to be core or something. And I don't know that we're really going to get it there either. Oh, bad. 50, God damn it. 50, 50, 50, 50. Okay. Now let's do like 1.35. Let's see if that trips OCP or something. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, Dan Nagura, 279 Canadian, thank you. Didn't realize this is live until t -pose. Joshua Bell, $2. NC needs a computer parts store like Micro Center. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if a lot of states had a computer parts store, but we had um, CompUSA and Tiger Direct. Tiger Direct was awful. And CompUSA was purchased by Tiger Direct, if I remember correctly, and therefore became awful. Hideki Setsuko, $5. Thank you. I oh, know it scrolled up. Always appreciate something. Always. Your vids and how you keep it real with the community. Question though, I have a 7980XE, that's convenient. 4.6 and 3, 3600 megahertz RAM with two SLI 2080Ti's bottleneck. Um, it depends on the graphic settings and the resolution. If you're at like 4K, we have testing actually. Uh, we've got a test for SLI 2080Ti's and on a 8086K, so a lot of games are frequency dependent. So an 8086K is going to be faster than a 7980XE or as fast as one, depending on the game, just because they like frequency more than cores most of the time. So you can look at those numbers and more or less extrapolate at what point you'll be limited. Um, if you're pushing high enough resolution, high enough settings, especially with the way SLI doesn't scale sometimes, then I, I don't know. I don't think you're, you're not going to be bottlenecked too hard if you are at all. It just depends on the game. But look up the... Um, SLI benchmarks we did. <laughs> and almost. That's actually really good for 5 gigahertz on 4 cores. That's pretty damn good. Mustangs by Matt, $5. Nuclear bombs dropped. We're called Fat Man and Little Boy. I guess this is in response to the Fat Boy. Uh, wasn't the nuke in Fallout Fat Boy, though? 
Dan Nagura, 279, will you ever OC a Mac? Nope. I don't even know how to use one. I get, I get stressed every time I try. I have to use an Apple product. Can't figure out how to click on things, particularly the right click. That's a terrible experience. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> TechWorks, $2. X499, more MATX motherboards for Threadripper. Don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the current roadmap is for Threadripper. Bradley from Anchorage. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. That's going a long way. Uh, picked up two of the beer glasses. Thank you, Bradley. And then we got one from Kyle in Florida. Picked up some uh, extra parts. Got a grounding cable and a wrist uh, wrist strap. ESD wrist strap. Not to be confused with the Verge Livestrom Livestrom strap. 1.365 volts now, so kind of pushing it. But we had a lot of thermal room a little bit ago. I'd like to try and cap this in the next 20 minutes if possible with the uh, overclock dialing in now about as tight as it can go other than that last few cores. Mustangs by Matt. Plans to assemble a card. The guy from Strange Parts could help. That would blend both sides of the audience. I don't... Which card? Plans to assemble... Oh, the um, the MSI card. No, no current plans. I, uh, sourcing a GPU would be pretty hard for that. We'd have to, like, desolder one or something. <laughs> Dixon Software Solutions. Do you have any info you can share about Arctic Sound? No, I do not. Uh, Duff Biker. Favorite craft beer? Do not have one. Sorry. Ask Paul. Uh, Joe Zebra, $2. Y'all looking for a French writer on your team? Not presently, not presently expanding. Um, Who is in France? Chips and Bits, maybe? Chips and Bits, and uh, there's some other publication over there. I forget what they're called. There are a couple of publications in France, though, for sure. And they're French language. Uh, Kelly Gaynor, $5. Wish you had the stickers with no stick, just vinyl. Looking for a nice vinyl logo to stick on the back of my Nintendo Switch. It has a clear case. I guess you could... Mm, that, that'd be kind of a pain. I was going to say, I guess you could like stick it onto a piece of paper, but then you'd have to mask it and cut everything out. So, yes, unfortunately, we don't have that. Sorry. Uh, Dan Agura, tell cameraman to zoom on your hands when you clickety-click UEFI. I think we did that once already. All right, temperatures are actually fine. 81, 83, 80, 88 is a bit high on that one. But they're otherwise fine. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe we'll actually get it. 12,110. <laughs> pretty damn close. This is without ice, mind you. That is pretty damn good. So now we're at 5.0 on four cores, and everything else is the same. have to get another 300 points, which we just got like 200. So I would need to get like 5.1 out of a couple of these. I don't know if it's possible to do 12,400. <laughs> it's so close though. <clears throat> it's very, very close to where I want it to be. Okay. Yes, there we go. So, I wonder if I can just boost it to 5.0 on more cores, maybe. Maybe that is feasible. Try two more cores. See what that. See what that does. Two more ice. Two, two more ice cubes. Oh, someone suggested two more cores to 5.0. So there you go. That's what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Overwatch highlights, 20 SEK, thank you. What is your take on Paylet GPUs? I don't really have an opinion on them. They don't, uh, they don't sell in the US, as far as I'm aware, so I've never worked with one. Mustangs by Matt, $2. Fan meetup, medium mod mat, uh, maybe someday, and then medium mod mat, we actually finally got a sample in that we're really happy with. So, not showing it off yet, but um, we do have a sample in, it's good. We just need to 
to finalize details going to production. So really happy about that. We are finally going to have one. Um, it's not being made yet, so you know, give us a little bit more time, but it's it's looking like we're gonna get those made by end of year, or like start the production run by end of year, that is, which means they'll probably be up on the store around CES or at, probably a bit after CES, something like that. Really mad is $2. What's your honest opinion of the 2080, your truly honest opinion? I gave that in the review. Um, my opinion was buy a 1080 Ti, and now those are mostly gone. So if you want 1080 Ti class performance, you can't get a 1080 Ti for cheaper, then I guess you have to get a 2080. Um, if you're not going to play anything with RTX, or you're not going to play anything with the RT cores leveraged, then it feels kind of wasteful. But I don't know. I, I wish we got more from RTX than we did and didn't use all the die space on other stuff that's in one game presently. By the way, 42 amps <laughs> for the current. So if you're wondering about power, that puts us at about 500 watts, 504 watts. Thermophile, $5. Off topic, any guess if Zen 2 TR will fit in Gen 1 TR boards? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking X499 for those probably. That's pretty, pretty close to working. More voltage. So I'm not sure. Uh, I I really don't know. I think. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no conclusion on that right now. Tyler Greeson, ten dollars. My most recent CPU, seventeen hundred, died from running four point two five gigahertz for far too long. Might be uh, eighty five amps. Do I do I go Threadripper to any of them? Twenty seven hundred X. Wait for Ryzen 2 or return to Intel HEDT, Lightroom catalog. 2.5 million photos. That is a lot of photos. Um, I don't know how Lightroom does. I'd have to look up the performance. Check Puget Systems, see what they say about the performance for Lightroom. We have some Photoshop tests, if that's helpful to you. But uh, I buy, if you have that many photos and you're that serious about photography, look into benchmarks for it. Because that sounds like that's the only thing that's going to matter is how well they perform in that. Puget should have some, some benchmarks. We have some for Photoshop, though. Astral Flow, $2. Behold, Tech Jesus, turning ice into stable OCs. <laughs> and so it, was, so it was told. Christian Calderon, $2. Memory OC will work just set to 2 volts. Not going to happen on this board. Unfortunately, uh, Sean Collins, $2. Ice cream tubs and freezing large blocks of ice. We... We will just we'll do a chest device at some point with this setup. Not sure when though. So is 1.38 going to be enough to stabilize? I really want the last few points here. Mustangs by Matt, five dollars. Do you like Star Trek props? I have a Mark 10 tricorder model with working lights and screens. I'd like to send you who live long and prosper. That's pretty cool. Uh, I do. I have some. I, I have some old tricorder and phaser model from I think uh, modeled after the original series that are pretty cool. They do also working lights and screens. I don't know if it's the same one. Let me see. No, it is not the same one. I mean, hey, if you don't have any personal attachment to it, I, I'll gladly find somewhere to put it in the set. Um, we've got the PO box listed on the last uh, fan mail stream. Terry Berry, $5 for the next electrical fire that you have. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Bazinga, $5. They now have RGB chopsticks. Will the madness ever stop? Have you seen those? I'm afraid. Uh, he was serious. They exist. <laughs> um, John Don, $2. Buy a used $200 car and tap into the radiator. Probably be cheaper than some of the liquid cooling parts that we are using on this thing. Um, got a store order from uh, Gopal, apologies for the pronunciation, in the United Kingdom. Picked up an autograph mod mat, thank you. Uh, an anniversary mug, and then two of the beer glasses. Thank you very much for your tremendous support. We appreciate it, of course. And this is passing. So, it did it. 1.38 volts, it did it. It's really good 5.0 now on six cores 1.38 volts up from like 1.35 i think 
12,138. Is that even an improvement? It's not really. Okay. I think that's going to be about the limit then. Maybe with CL14 or something. Um, I can process lasso it. I don't know. 300 points is kind of a lot to try and claw back. And I think we got to save something for ice. But this is getting extremely far uh, for, for the thing we're using, for just the radiator without any exotic cooling. So the fact that it's getting this far with that setup that you're looking at right now tells me that we have a lot more headroom in this thing if we put it under just normal ice. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to save this profile and... Uh, let's see, 9980XE stream Mora. And uh, then what I'm going to do is while I while I go through uh, the last few super chats, you can check out OC Robot and see how that works. Got it? Well, cool, thanks. So this is called OC Robot. Uh, I've never used it before, and it's an EVGA auto overclocking tool. We're going to see what it lands at versus what I landed at. And I'm going to do super chats while that's going. So we had <clears throat> Douglas M, $5. Don't really have anything to ask. Just want to support the channel. Well, thank you. Uh, if it, is, it is of great support. And I'm hungry, so I'll use your $5 on some food. <laughs> this, is, this is some name, but it was a donation. And I guess it's not bad enough to not read. Five dollars from Grease Nipples. <laughs> Even Andrew laughed at that one. Opinion on the Corsair 600Q case. Uh, Corsair 600Q. I don't... Oh, I remember this one. I have to look up the 600C and see uh, what was that one like. I mean, it, it looks awfully warm. I don't know. I haven't tested it personally. Uh, I've worked with the the chassis before from a different case, and the build quality is high. But you might need some help with the um, the thermals. When we see a 2080 Ti Strix review, I don't know, probably soon, I guess. I'm, I'm done with all the 2080 Ti failure testing, so that's good. Oh, is it done? Is that it? So, it <laughs> so we just spent a couple hours uh, getting to 4.4... Sorry, getting to, to 5.0 gigahertz on six cores, 4.9 on the rest, at 1.38 volts. And this thing did 4.4 gigahertz at 1.28 volts. It's basically running like a prime workload, I guess. Maybe like FFTs or something. 4.4 holds on this thing, though, at like 1.15, maybe 1.18. So that's, that's awfully aggressive. That is, that is extremely aggressive. Uh, <laughs> Well, our our overclock, I will say, is better. So, if you're wondering, man versus machine, I think I think we win this time. Let's let's give it one more go while I do a few more. So that's just uh, if you're just turning in. I already did the manual overclock. We're just kind of seeing what the auto overclock will achieve if I let it do its own thing. Danagura, OC the UEFI, please. Two seventy nine. Thank you. Uh, no way to do that, unfortunately. Clint Kern, five dollars. Following along in my. Uh, Following along in my semi truck at a rest area in the middle of nowhere, have my 8700K at 5.4 gigahertz all core 1.4 volts and 47 degrees Celsius. You don't have to show off that you can overclock that well while you're driving. I mean, it's impressive, but you can only go so far. 5.4 is really good though. Uh, Jubadib, two dollars. Lower build quality for steel. I would expect higher. Is that in reference? Line 56, what is that in reference to? I was probably talking about cases at that point, maybe. Uh, if I was talking about cases at that point, then the, is that, I think that's what I was talking about. Yeah, um, aluminum cases are typically accompanied by higher build quality just because the tremendous expense of the material to begin with, and then you have uh, a bit better engineering going into it. So, that is not a great. Let's just let's just do it. Let's. Uh, so we've got our score recorded. 
Let's do EVGA's version of the overclock and run it. And we can do it. We just do man versus machine right now. I mean, clearly they already lost, but I'm curious by how, how much it loses in times by extreme. Data file, $2. Google Depot's meme. Site called Know Your Meme. No thanks. I know what Know Your Meme is. Thank you very much. <laughs> Raiden54, $2. Graphics card silhouette magnetic screw tray. Uh, maybe. Brent Irwin, $20 Canadian. Thank you. Steve, can you give up the software used to, to change CPU multiplier on Epic Super Micro board? I don't have it, uh, aka Derbauer. Yeah, I don't have it. Sorry. Uh, that's, a, that's a Roman thing. You'll have to beg him for it. And I doubt he's going to distribute it. I think I know what he did. If I remember correctly, I know how he did it. But I do not have the ability to distribute that for you. All right, let's see. How does, how does the auto OC do versus ours? <coughs> Dan Nagura, $13.99, thank you. Thoughts on building sleeper PCs with 90s beige case and a diskette? I've always thought that's kind of cool. Um, kind of like a sleeper car, I guess. You can, do, you can do some cool case mods on the old beige cases. I took a few and painted them, cut some holes in them, and I was really happy with how they turned out after going through a couple days of modding. So uh, it's a fun project, and there's zero risk because your only expense is going to be the paint and the tools. Cases, beige cases don't cost anything. Super 22nd, seconds, sec, 22nd, one dollar Australian, thank you. Phoenix, 1861, 499, I didn't say it earlier, so thanks for the amazing content. Can you tell me where I can download some more RAM? I, I think you will have to first download the internet and then you can download some RAM. Next question is from Great Tube and, oh yes, I, I knew what your, I think I, I've seen your name before, and I'm trying to remember. You corrected me once on how to say it. I think it's great to be an AU Tiger. Is that it? Otherwise, it looks like GR82 Banau Tiger. $5. <laughs> I think that's how I said it the first time. Bent the crap out of my Asus Prime Z370 socket pins. Any chance you guys would want to try to fix it to, for content? Unfortunately, no. I've, I've unbent enough CPU pins in the last couple weeks to not want to do it um, any further. Uh, my best suggestion to you, two things you could do, a razor blade and uh, get it like parallel to all the pins and just like carefully flex it back. And then uh, another option is a fish hook is probably the best possible tool for unbending pins outside of a straight, a really small razor. Wow, impressive. <laughs> Um, can we get an F for the robot, please? So if you wanted a man versus machine battle, our score was 12,138, and the robot auto OC got 10,488 at a much higher voltage than it should have. Now, if you don't know, I mean, if those numbers don't mean much to you, and that's fair, uh, it doesn't look like a big difference percentage-wise. It's still like 20% or something, but... The difference is like a couple hours of work manually, and um, the the increase in difficulty is nonlinear. So getting to that 12k is pretty difficult comparatively. So there's there's that. Okay, I'm gonna read the rest of the super chats. Um, do me a favor, don't send any more because I gotta catch up. So uh, I'm gonna cut it off at 10 10 30 p.m. Eastern. I'm cutting off super chats. That's now, by the way. We got NM. Uh, go, got it all user, $2. Christian Calderon, $2. Can you stream 720p, 24 FPS, 60 is too hard on the old CPU? No, but I guess you can step it down to 30. Uh, I guess you have to go maybe 40 then, sorry. Aaron Tabby to Savit, $5. Between 2080 FE or MSI Gaming X Trio 2080, which is better? Um, oh, the Gaming X Trio, for sure. I don't even need to finish testing them to know that. Uh, it burns when internet protocol. Not going to miss an opportunity to send in a super chat to make me say his name. It burns when IP. $2. Try Jensen's mentality. Believe it just works. Well, that's what we did, and it got us pretty far, but not quite to 12,400. Very good, though, for not ice. I will say that. A couple more. Uh, win. I'm going to stop there. win. $10. Thank you. So I just want to say thank you, BuildZoid, and you for the PowerPlay table information. It helped me tune my Gigabyte Vega 64 card with 40 CU Navi. I may need to make it another. I, I, I may need another 
to make it to 2022. Uh, OGBZilla, 8 Tech, Asus City. I don't know what the last part means, but glad to hear PowerPlay tables help you. It's really fun to do those mods. I like working with the Vega cards for that reason, even though it's kind of impractical, but it's fun. Uh, and um, got it a user again, $2. You want two, two times WD wrapped 10,075 gigabytes use, used to RAID them. We're good on those. We have a wrapped 10K RPM drive in the background over there. So we are good. Thank you, though. Danagura, what kind of performance would an RTX sized chip with all of the CUDA be, I guess, is the question. Um, well, you, oh, you mean without like RT cores and stuff? I don't know. Uh, I'm not positive how that would scale. But I would think instead maybe keep the same. FPUs and then just make the chip smaller and that would reduce cost significantly and improve yields. Sean Sloys, two dollars. Gigabyte B three hundred and fifty gaming. Would R five twenty six hundred work? Uh, I don't remember that motherboard. It would work. I don't think it would be good. Um, mm, you could run it on that. Just don't be be careful of the overclocking. Uh, okay, Luck AU, two dollars Australian. Thank you. My R5. We have a lot of Australian viewers, but I guess it's the right time for that. My R5 1600 only hits four gigahertz at 1.47 volts. Did I lose? That is, that's pretty high voltage. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say you were not one of the winners of the Silicon Lottery. Sorry. Uh, Scuba Steve TXST, five dollars. For someone who streams and games on a single rig at 1080p, what are your thoughts on a 9900K versus one of the new XEs? on X299. The 900K, we did stream testing, actually, and it does really well. So so does uh, like Ryzen 7 chip. Either one, perfectly fine. 1080p gaming, streaming, no problem at all. On uh, 9900K especially, 8700K does OK. You're, you'll be fine. X, XE is completely unnecessary for that. Techno Creeper, $10, thank you. I'm debating on a Vega 56 card for 144 hertz FreeSync or a 1070 Ti for the same price. What to do? Uh, well, Vega 56 is, is competitive, but 1070 Ti is going to outclass it in a lot of cases. So I don't know. How much do you want FreeSync? And also, uh, if you're willing to play around with the Vega 56 card and you don't care as much about power, without going to power play tables, you can still overclock it pretty well and get competitive performance. Um, I don't know. I, it depends on the price, I guess. If they're, like, if they're the same price, I'm inclined to say 1070 Ti. For the performance, but if you really care about non tearing in games, I guess that decides it for you without budgeting for G Zinc or something. Guido Salducci, $2. More super chats, and yours is the last one at 10 31 p.m. Uh, we had a couple, st three more store orders I'll read and then we'll close out here. So I got Nick from New York, thank you. Picked up the Teal logo shirt, that's the anniversary design I'm wearing tonight. Picked up one of those, thank you, Nick. Got an order from Colburn from Illinois, picked up the uh, Teardown Crystal statue with the RGB base, the only product we make with the RGB. Uh, thank you. And then Evgeny in uh, Israel picked up two of the cobalt glasses, one of the Teardown Crystals as well. Those are popular tonight. Thank you for picking those up. They're, we think they're really cool. And then one of the keychains as well. So that is it. We ended up at 12,138. Uh, which is pretty, pretty damn good, I will say. That's like really good for basically a 7980XE without ice. Uh, that's, that's great. I'm pretty happy with that. It is not 12,400. So we fell short of where our original CPU did, 7980XE. But oh, someone's great to be an Auburn Tiger. Thank you. I thought it was Australian, but that works. <laughs> Same thing. Um, so yeah, pr I'm pretty happy with the performance here. Uh, 5.0 on six cores if you're wondering. And 5.06 cores, what else? Memory of 3800, we're stuck there. Couldn't do 4000 tonight. CL15, might try 14 some other day. Uh, 260 for TRFC, 38 for FA, and that's the most I, I remember off the top of my head. But yeah, pretty damn good for settings overall. It just, I mean, it, let's take one last look at this. It required this to do it. But it was only in the 80s for temperature, so. I mean, I probably could have pushed a lot more voltage. We had the room to go to 1.4. But uh, we'll save that for another time.
because I think we're just talking about like 100 point increases at this point. So yeah, that's it. That's the setup. That's the Mora 3 with um, four 200s on it and four 140s on it. And thank you all for watching. Lots of fun as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up some of our products that you saw during the stream. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus if you want to see the two behind the scenes videos we did in the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, subscribe for more. We'll have another stream soon with the CPU. I'll see you all next time.